Trixner's tentacles trembled as she adjusted the focus on her observation pod, hovering silently above the sprawling metropolis of New York City. The holographic display flickered, showing millions of human life signs pulsing in harmony. Suddenly, the entire grid began to dim. No, 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 Trix exclaimed, her biolite skin flashing in distress. She frantically tapped commands into the console, desperately trying to recalibrate the sensors. But the readings remained the same human life signs were fading across the board. Without hesitation, Trix activated the emergency comm link. Commander Cora Zax, come in immediately. Cora's stern face materialized on the screen. Report, scientist Ner, what's the emergency? They're all dying, Trix blurted out her voice quivering. Every single human on the planet is losing consciousness simultaneously. Cora's expression hardened. Impossible. Check your equipment. I've triple-checked everything, Trix insisted. It's happening right now. We're witnessing a mass extinction event. Cora's eyes narrowed. Initiate full planetary scan. I'm on my way. Within moments, Cora's sleek craft docked with Trix's observation pod. The commander strode in, her metallic exoskeleton gleaming under the pod's biolites. Show me everything, Cora demanded. Trix pulled up multiple holographic displays, each showing different cities around the globe. In every location, human life signs were dimming at an alarming rate. It started approximately 30 minutes ago, Trix explained. First New York. Then it spread westward. Now it's affecting the entire planet. Cora studied the data, her cybernetic implants processing the information at lightning speed. Any environmental anomalies, solar flares, seismic activity. Trix shook her head. Nothing out of the ordinary. It's as if their bodies are simply shutting down. As they watched, the last few bright spots on the global map faded to a dull glow. An eerie silence fell over the observation pod. We've failed, Trix whispered, her skin now a pale, sickly green. Our mission to study humanity, it's over before it even began. Cora remained silent, her eyes fixed on the displays. Suddenly, she pointed at a small cluster of life signs. There, zoom in on that area. Trix complied, and the hologram expanded to show a hospital. Inside, a handful of humans still showed strong life signs. Why aren't they affected? Cora mused. Trix's eyes widened. Wait, look at the time stamps. This phenomenon, it's moving with the planet's rotation. It's tied to their day-night cycle. Cora's metallic fingers danced over the console, pulling up historical data. You're right. This has happened before. Every day, in fact. But how is that possible? Trix asked, bewildered. No species can survive daily mass unconsciousness. Unless... Cora paused, her mind racing. Unless it's not death at all. What if this is a natural part of their biology? As they pondered this revelation, the first cluster of dimmed life signs in New York began to brighten again. They're reviving, Trix exclaimed, her skin pulsing with excitement. Cora nodded, a rare smile crossing her face. It seems, scientist Ner, that we've stumbled upon something extraordinary. These humans. They enter a state of unconsciousness every day, and then they recover. But why? Trix asked, her scientific curiosity overriding her earlier panic. What purpose could this serve? That, Cora said, her eyes gleaming with the thrill of discovery, is what we're going to find out. This changes everything we thought we knew about human biology. Trix's mind raced with the implications. Our mission, it's no longer just observation, is it? Cora shook her head. No, we need to understand this phenomenon. It could be the key to unlocking secrets about consciousness itself. As the sun rose over New York, millions of human life signs blazed back to full strength on the holographic display. Trix and Cora watched in awe as the wave of awakening spread across the globe. Prepare for planetary insertion, Cora commanded. We need boots on the ground for this one. 
Trix felt a mix of excitement and trepidation. We're going to interact with them directly. We have to, Cora replied. This discovery is too important, but we must move carefully. If humans can lose consciousness so easily, who knows what other surprises they might have in store for us. As their pod began its descent towards the awakening city, both aliens knew that their mission had just become far more complex and far more dangerous than they could have ever imagined. As the alien observation pod descended towards the bustling streets of New York, Sam Carter's alarm blared to life. He groaned, fumbling for his phone to silence the incessant noise. Sunlight streamed through his apartment window, signaling the start of another ordinary day. Unaware of the extraterrestrial eyes now fixed upon him, Sam stumbled out of bed and shuffled to the bathroom. He splashed water on his face, the cool liquid shocking his system into alertness. As he gazed at his reflection, dark circles under his eyes hinted at a restless night. In the observation pod, Trixner zoomed in on Sam's apartment. Look, Commander, this human seems disoriented. Cora Zax nodded, her cybernetic implants whirring as she processed the data. Interesting. Perhaps there are after effects from their daily unconsciousness. Sam, oblivious to the alien scrutiny, went about his morning routine. He brewed coffee, its rich aroma filling the small kitchen. As he sipped the hot beverage, he scrolled through his phone, catching up on news and messages. They consume stimulants, Trix observed, noting the coffee, perhaps to counteract the lingering effects of their unconscious state. Cora made a mental note. We'll need to analyze these substances. They might hold clues to understanding this phenomenon. Sam finished his breakfast and headed out, joining the throng of commuters on the subway. The aliens watched in fascination as humans packed themselves into metal tubes, hurtling through underground tunnels. Their society continues to function despite this daily interruption, Cora mused. Remarkable adaptability. At work, Sam navigated office politics and looming deadlines. He yawned frequently, earning concerned glances from his colleague, Ella Ross. Rough night, Sam, Ella asked, offering him another cup of coffee. Sam nodded gratefully. Yeah, weird dreams. Couldn't shake them off this morning. Trix's antennae perked up at this exchange. Commander, they seem to experience something during their unconscious state. They call it dreams. Cora leaned in, intrigued. Dreams? Could this be some form of continued consciousness? As the day progressed, the aliens observed Sam's productivity gradually declining. By late afternoon, he was stifling yawns and struggling to focus on his computer screen. Their energy levels appear to deplete over time, Trix noted. It's as if they're slowly losing power. Cora nodded. This unconscious state must serve some restorative function. But why can't they replenish their energy while conscious? After work, Sam met friends at a local bar. The aliens watched puzzled as humans voluntarily consume substances that seemed to impair their already diminishing faculties. As night fell, Sam returned home. He changed into comfortable clothes and settled on his couch, flicking through TV channels. His eyelids grew heavy, and soon he drifted off to sleep. In the observation pod, alarms blared as Sam's life signs dimmed. It's happening again, Trix exclaimed. Cora raised a hand, silencing the alarms. Stay calm. We know now that this is normal for them. Let's observe closely. As Sam slept, his eyes darted rapidly beneath closed lids. His breathing quickened, and small muscle twitches rippled across his body. What's happening to him? Trix asked, concerned. Cora shook her head. I'm not sure. But remember what he said earlier about dreams? Suddenly, Sam's brainwave pattern spiked. In his dream, he found himself flying over a vast, alien landscape. Strange, biolite creatures floated through the air around him. As he soared higher, he saw a massive, metallic structure hovering above the planet's surface eerily similar to the alien's actual observation pod. In the real world, Sam's face contorted, a mix of awe and fear. The aliens watched 
captivated by the intense brain activity they were recording. This is incredible, Cora breathed. Their minds are incredibly active during this unconscious state. It's as if they're experiencing a whole other reality. Trix's skin rippled with excitement. Could this be some form of mental processing? Or perhaps astral projection? As the night wore on, Sam cycled through periods of deep rest and vivid dreams. The aliens diligently recorded every fluctuation in his biosigns, every twitch and murmur. Just before dawn, Sam's eyes fluttered open. He sat up, rubbing his face, the memory of his dreams already fading like mist in the morning sun. In the observation pod, Cora and Trix exchanged glances. We've only scratched the surface, Cora said. This sleep phenomenon is far more complex than we initially thought. Trix nodded, her scientific curiosity fully ignited. What other secrets might humans be hiding in their unconscious minds? As Sam started his morning routine anew, blissfully unaware of the alien scrutiny, Cora made a decision. We need to establish direct contact. It's time to wake one of our human assets. As the sun climbed higher in the sky, Trix and Cora retreated to their cloaked ship, hovering silently above Central Park. They pored over the data collected from Sam Carter's sleep cycle, searching for the ideal human subject for their next phase of research. We need someone with knowledge of this sleep phenomenon, Cora mused, her metallic fingers dancing across the holographic interface. Trix's antennae twitched in agreement. Yes, but also someone who might be more accessible during their unconscious hours. Their search algorithm churned through countless human profiles before settling on one. Ella Ross, sleep researcher at New York University's Neuroscience Department. Perfect, Cora declared, studying Ella's file. She's an expert in human sleep patterns. Trix's biolite skin pulsed with excitement. And look at this, she suffers from a condition called insomnia. She struggles to enter the unconscious state. Cora's eyes narrowed. Intriguing. A human who resists the very phenomenon we're trying to understand. She could provide valuable insights. As night fell over the city, Trix and Cora prepared for their covert mission. They donned holographic disguises, their alien features shimmering into human form. Remember, Cora instructed, minimal interaction. We observe and extract, nothing more. They tracked Ella to her apartment a small studio cluttered with research papers and empty coffee cups. Through the window, they watched as she paced restlessly, dark circles prominent under her eyes. Inside, Ella fought against her own exhaustion. She'd been awake for nearly 48 hours, her mind racing with theories and data from her latest sleep study. The irony wasn't lost on her, a sleep researcher who couldn't sleep. She grabbed another cup of coffee, her hands shaking slightly. Just a few more hours, she muttered to herself. I'm so close to a breakthrough. Outside, Trix and Cora exchanged puzzled glances. Why does she resist the unconscious state, Trix whispered. It seems detrimental to her health. Cora shook her head. Human behavior continues to baffle me. Let's proceed with the extraction. As they prepared to enter Ella's apartment, a new complication arose. Ella's phone rang, startling both the human and the aliens. Dr. Ross, a voice crackled through the speaker. We need you at the sleep lab. One of our study participants is exhibiting unusual brain activity during REM sleep. Ella's exhaustion seemed to evaporate. I'll be right there, she said, already grabbing her coat. Trix and Cora watched in frustration as their target hurried out of the apartment. We must follow her. Cora decided, this could provide valuable data. They trailed Ella to the university's sleep lab, their holographic disguises allowing them to blend in with the late-night crowd. Inside, they observed as Ella and her team huddled around monitors displaying a sleeping human's brain scans. These delta wave patterns are off the charts, one researcher exclaimed. It's like his brain is operating in a completely different state of consciousness. Ella leaned in, her fatigue forgotten in the face of scientific discovery. 
It's similar to what we saw in deep meditation practitioners, but more intense as if he's accessing a part of the brain we've never seen active before. Trix and Cora listened intently, their own scientific curiosity piqued. Commander, Trix whispered, this unconscious state seems far more complex than we initially thought. Cora nodded, her cybernetic implants working overtime to process the new information. We may need to reevaluate our approach. Simply extracting a human may not be enough. As the night wore on, Ella's adrenaline began to fade. Her colleagues noticed her swaying on her feet. Dr. Ross, when was the last time you slept? One asked, concerned. Ella waved off the question. I'm fine. This is too important to miss. But her body had other plans. As she leaned in to examine another set of scans, her eyes rolled back and she collapsed. Dr. Ross, her colleagues cried, rushing to her aid. Trix and Cora watched in fascination as Ella's body finally succumbed to sleep, right there on the lab floor. It seems even those who resist cannot avoid it indefinitely, Cora observed. As the human researchers tended to Ella, Trix and Cora seized the opportunity. They slipped into the lab, their advanced technology allowing them to copy vast amounts of sleep study data undetected. Just before they left, Cora paused by Ella's unconscious form. We'll meet again soon, Dr. Ross, she murmured. You may hold the key to understanding this fascinating aspect of human biology. As they retreated to their ship, Trix and Cora knew their mission had grown far more complex. The mystery of human sleep was deeper than they had ever imagined, and Ella Ross with her expertise and her own sleep struggles had become central to their investigation. Prepare for long-term observation, Cora commanded as they lifted off, we need to understand not just the unconscious state, but the human drive to resist it. Our mission has only just begun. The New York City skyline glittered in the distance as Trix and Cora's ship hovered silently above Ella Ross's apartment building. They had spent days meticulously planning this abduction, studying human behavior patterns and perfecting their approach. Remember, quick and quiet, Cora instructed as they prepared to descend. We'll be in and out before she even realizes what's happening. But as they activated their personal cloaking devices and began their descent, a sudden burst of energy scattered their molecules. They rematerialized on the rooftop, disoriented and exposed. What in the name of the Galactic Council, Trix exclaimed, her biolite skin flashing in alarm. A sleek, obsidian craft shimmered into view above them. A hatch opened, and a figure emerged tall, angular, with iridescent scales that seemed to absorb light. Vex Lorne, Cora hissed, recognizing the rival alien scientist. Vex's multifaceted eyes gleamed with amusement. Cora Zax and Trixner, I should have known you'd be fumbling around on this backwater planet. This is our assigned research zone, Lorne, Cora growled. You have no authority here. Vex laughed, a sound like grinding crystals. Authority? I answer to a higher power now. The human sleep phenomenon is far too valuable to be left in your incompetent appendages. Before Cora could respond, Vex activated a device on his wrist. A beam of energy shot towards Ella's apartment window. No, Trix cried, realizing their carefully laid plans were unraveling. In the chaos that ensued, none of the aliens noticed a figure on the street below staring up at the impossible scene unfolding above. Sam Carter had been walking home from a late-night convenience store run, his mind foggy with fatigue, when a flash of light caught his attention. He looked up just in time to see what appeared to be three otherworldly beings engaged in some sort of conflict on the rooftop. His sleep-deprived brain struggled to process the sight. I must be dreaming, he muttered, pinching himself, but the scene didn't fade away. As Sam watched, paralyzed with a mixture of fear and fascination, a beam of light shot from the rooftop into a nearby apartment window. A muffled scream echoed through the night, followed by the sound of breaking glass. Instinct overrode Sam's fear. He rushed into the building, taking the stairs two at a time. He reached the apartment just as the door burst open from the inside. 
Ella Ross stumbled out, her eyes wide with terror. Help, she gasped, collapsing into Sam's arms. They're... they're not human. Before Sam could respond, a shimmering field enveloped them both. He felt a strange tingling sensation, and suddenly the hallway dissolved around them. They rematerialized in a vast, metallic chamber. Ella, overwhelmed by the rapid sequence of events, fainted in Sam's arms. What the hell is going on, Sam demanded, his voice echoing in the strange space. An unfortunate complication, a voice responded. Sam turned to see a figure emerge from the shadows humanoid in shape, but clearly not human. Its skin rippled with biolite patterns, and its eyes held an otherworldly intelligence. You weren't supposed to be here, the alien continued, its voice a mix of curiosity and concern. I am Trixner, and you, Sam Carter, have just become an integral part of our mission. Sam's mind reeled. Mission? What mission? How do you know my name? Before Trix could answer, another alien appeared this one more imposing, with metallic exoskeletal features. We don't have time for explanations, it barked. Vex is in pursuit. We need to leave orbit immediately. Sam felt the floor vibrate beneath his feet. Through a nearby viewport, he watched in disbelief as the earth grew smaller, the reality of his situation sinking in with terrifying clarity. I demand to know what's happening, Sam shouted, his fear turning to anger. Why did you take us? What do you want? The metallic alien turned to him, its cybernetic eyes glowing with an unreadable emotion. What we want, Sam Carter, is to understand why humans willingly lose consciousness every day. We need to know how you can simply shut down and then reactivate. It defies everything we know about sentient life. Sam blinked, confusion momentarily overriding his fear. You mean? Sleep? This is all about how humans sleep. The alien nodded solemnly. Sleep, as you call it, is unknown in the rest of the galaxy. It makes your species unique and potentially invaluable. As the implications of this statement sank in, alarms blared throughout the ship. The metallic alien Cora, Sam remembered Trix calling her rushed to a control panel. Vex has locked onto our position, she announced grimly. Prepare for emergency quantum jump. Sam opened his mouth to protest, to demand they return him and Ella to Earth. But his words were cut short as the ship lurched violently. The viewport filled with a blinding light and Sam felt as if his very atoms were being pulled apart. As consciousness began to fade, his last coherent thought was a bitter irony after years of studying sleep. He and Ella were about to experience a form of unconsciousness beyond anything humans had ever known. The ship vanished in a burst of quantum energy, leaving Earth and everything Sam had ever known far behind. Sam's head throbbed as consciousness slowly returned. He blinked trying to focus on his surroundings. The metallic walls and pulsing biolite lights were a stark reminder that the previous night's events hadn't been a dream. Ella, he called out, his voice hoarse. There was no response. A door slid open with a soft hiss, and Trixner entered, her alien features no longer concealed by holographic disguise. Sam scrambled backward, his heart racing. Stay back, he shouted grabbing the nearest object a strange, curved device and brandishing it like a weapon. Trix's skin rippled with patterns that Sam guessed might indicate amusement. That's a waste recycler, Sam Carter. Not very effective as a weapon. Embarrassed, Sam lowered the device but maintained his defensive posture. Where's Ella? What have you done with her? Dr. Ross is safe, Trix assured him. She's in our medical bay, still unconscious. Her prolonged resistance to sleep seems to have taken a toll on her physiology. Sam's scientific curiosity momentarily overrode his fear. You're really aliens? And you're studying human sleep? Trix nodded, her antennae twitching. We've been observing your species for some time. Your daily unconsciousness is fascinating to us. Fascinating, Sam echoed. It's just sleep. Everyone does it. That's precisely what we find so extraordinary, Trix explained. 
No other known sentient species requires this daily shutdown. Sam shook his head, bewildered. But it's essential. We can't function without it. Trix's eyes widened. You mean you would cease to exist without this sleep? Well, not immediately, Sam clarified. But eventually, yes, sleep deprivation can be fatal. This revelation seemed to shock Trix. Her skin flashed rapidly, and she began pacing the room. But why? What function does this unconsciousness serve that couldn't be achieved while awake? Sam found himself slipping into lecture mode, momentarily forgetting the absurdity of his situation. Sleep serves multiple purposes. It's when our bodies repair themselves, our brains consolidate memories, and we process emotions. Trix stopped pacing, her alien features contorted in what Sam guessed was confusion. You require unconsciousness to process emotions. Well, not entirely, Sam said. But dreams play a big role in emotional regulation. Dreams? Trix repeated the word as if tasting it. Ah, yes, the vivid experiences you have while unconscious. We observed intense brain activity during these periods. Sam nodded, warming to the topic. Dreams can be incredibly realistic. Sometimes it's hard to distinguish them from reality. Trix's skin suddenly paled. Are you... Dreaming now, Sam Carter. The question caught Sam off guard. He pinched himself, wincing at the pain. No, this is definitely real, though I kind of wish it wasn't. Just then, Cora entered the room, her metallic exoskeleton gleaming. Enough chatter, she barked. We need to prepare for Vex's next move. Sam's brief moment of scientific camaraderie with Trix evaporated. Look, this has been educational, but I need to go home. We both do. Cora's cybernetic eyes fixed on Sam. I'm afraid that's impossible. Your knowledge of our existence complicates things. Complicates? Sam's fear turned to anger. You kidnapped us. How's that for a complication? Before Cora could respond, alarms blared throughout the ship. A holographic display materialized, showing a massive vessel approaching. It's Vex, Trix gasped. How did he find us so quickly? Cora's fingers flew over a control panel. He must have planted a tracker during the chaos of the abduction. Sam saw an opportunity. Look, whatever's going on between you aliens, it's not our problem. Just drop us off at the nearest planet and we'll be out of your way. Cora turned to him, her expression grim. I'm afraid it's very much your problem now, Sam Carter. Vex doesn't just want to study human sleep, he wants to weaponize it. Weaponize sleep? Sam scoffed. That's ridiculous. Is it? Cora challenged. A method to render entire populations unconscious at will? To manipulate dreams and influence minds? The potential for galactic domination is immense. The gravity of the situation hit Sam like a physical blow. He slumped against the wall, his mind reeling. Suddenly, Ella's voice came through an intercom. Sam? Are you there? You need to see this. Trix quickly brought up another holographic display, showing the medical bay. Ella stood there, her face pale, but her eyes wide with excitement. I've been reviewing their data on human sleep patterns, she said breathlessly. Sam, it's incredible. Their observations have revealed aspects of sleep we've never even imagined. This could revolutionize our understanding of consciousness itself. As Sam processed this information, a violent tremor shook the ship. Vex's vessel had opened fire. Cora's voice was steel as she addressed them all. It seems we have a choice to make. We can flee and protect our research, or we can stand and fight to keep this knowledge out of Vex's hands. Sam looked from Cora to Trix, then to Ella's image on the screen. He took a deep breath, realizing that the fate of human sleep and perhaps humanity itself now rested in their hands. All right, he said, his voice steadier than he felt. What's the plan? As dawn broke over New York City, a sleek, silver craft descended silently through the clouds, landing in a secluded area of Central Park. The ship's surface shimmered, 
activating its cloaking device and rendering it invisible to human eyes. A tall, elegant figure emerged from the craft. Zirakel, the renowned xenobiologist and leader of the Galactic Research Initiative, surveyed her surroundings with piercing, multifaceted eyes. Her iridescent scales shifted color as she absorbed the unfamiliar Earth atmosphere. Status report, she commanded into a communication device on her wrist. Korazax's voice crackled through. Commander Kel, we've encountered complications. Two humans have become aware of our presence. One is in our custody, the other escaped during Vexlorn's interference. Zira's antennae twitched with irritation. Unacceptable. I expected better from you, Cora. Where is the human now? We're tracking him. His name is Sam Carter. He's attempting to contact his associates. But so far, no one believes him. Ensure it stays that way, Zira ordered. I'll handle damage control here. Continue your research on the sleep phenomenon. We cannot allow Vex to gain an advantage. As Zira ended the communication, she activated her holographic disguise, transforming into a striking human woman with silver hair and piercing blue eyes. She strode purposefully out of the park, ready to take control of the situation. Meanwhile, across the city, Sam Carter paced anxiously in his small apartment. Dark circles under his eyes betrayed his lack of sleep since his encounter with the aliens. He glanced at his phone, debating whether to try calling Finn again. Taking a deep breath, he dialed the number. After several rings, a groggy voice answered. Sam, do you have any idea what time it is? Finn, I need to talk to you. It's important, Sam pleaded. There was a heavy sigh on the other end. Is this about the aliens again? Sam, we've been over this. I'm not crazy, Finn, Sam insisted. I know what I saw. Ella's missing, and no one seems to care. You have to believe me. Look, Sam, Finn's voice softened with concern. I get that you're going through something, but alien abductions? It's not rational. Have you considered talking to someone? Professionally, I mean... Sam's frustration boiled over. I don't need a shrink. I need my best friend to believe me. I'm trying to be your friend, Finn countered. That's why I'm worried. You haven't slept in days. You're missing work. And now these delusions? They're not delusions, Sam shouted, then immediately regretted his outburst. He took a calming breath. Finn, please. Just, just meet me. Let me explain everything in person. There was a long pause before Finn replied. Okay, let's meet at the coffee shop on 5th in an hour. But Sam, if this is more alien talk. Thank you, Sam said quickly, relief washing over him. I'll see you soon. As Sam hung up, he didn't notice the shimmer of a cloaking device deactivating outside his window. Trixner materialized, her alien features contorted with concern as she reported back to the ship. Commander Zax, the human is attempting to reveal our existence to his associate. Should we intervene? Cora's response was immediate. Negative. Maintain surveillance only. Commander Kell will decide how to proceed. At the upscale hotel where she had established her base of operations, Zira Kell reviewed the latest data on human sleep patterns. Her mind raced with the implications of their discoveries. The potential is staggering, she murmured to herself. If we can unlock the secrets of human sleep, we could revolutionize consciousness across the galaxy. Her musings were interrupted by an urgent communication from her ship. Commander Kell, we've detected unusual energy signatures. It appears Vexlorn has arrived on Earth. Zira's scales darkened with determination. Track his movements. We cannot allow him to interfere with our research or make contact with the humans. As she ended the communication, Zira gazed out at the New York skyline. The humans below went about their daily lives, blissfully unaware of the cosmic drama unfolding in their midst. Soon, she promised herself, we'll understand your most guarded secret, and the galaxy will never be the same. In the coffee shop, Sam anxiously awaited Finn's arrival. His leg bounced nervously as he sipped his fourth espresso of the day.
When Finn finally walked in, Sam's heart sank at the look of concern and skepticism on his friend's face. All right, Sam, Finn said as he sat down. I'm here. Let's talk. As Sam opened his mouth to begin his incredible tale, he noticed a striking silver-haired woman at a nearby table, watching him intently. For a moment, her eyes seemed to shimmer with an otherworldly light. Sam blinked, and the woman was gone. He turned back to Finn, his mind racing. Was he really losing it? Or was he now at the center of a cosmic conspiracy that threatened to change everything he thought he knew about the universe? With a deep breath, Sam began to speak, knowing that the next few minutes could determine not just his future, but potentially the fate of human consciousness itself. Ella Ross stood before a panel of alien scientists her initial fear now replaced by an intense scientific curiosity. The lab aboard the alien ship was a marvel of technology, with holographic displays and instruments beyond her wildest imagination. Sleep, as we understand it, occurs in cycles, Ella began, her voice steady despite the surreal circumstances. Each cycle consists of four stages, including what we call REM sleep. Trixner's antennae twitched with interest. REM? What does this acronym signify? Rapid eye movement, Ella explained. It's the stage where most dreaming occurs. Cora Zax leaned forward, her cybernetic implants whirring softly. Dreams. The vivid mental experiences you have while unconscious. Fascinating. Ella nodded, warming to her subject. What's truly remarkable is how the brain behaves during REM sleep. It's almost as active as when we're awake. The aliens exchanged glances, their expressions a mix of confusion and awe. Zira Kell, who had been observing silently, spoke up. How can the brain be active during unconsciousness? It seems contradictory. That's what makes sleep so incredible, Ella said, her eyes shining with enthusiasm. It's not just a shutdown of consciousness, it's a different state of being. To demonstrate, Ella volunteered to undergo a sleep study right there in the alien lab. She lay down on a bio bed, surrounded by advanced monitoring equipment. I'll try to cycle through the sleep stages quickly, she explained. It won't be a full night's sleep, but it should give you an idea of what happens. As Ella closed her eyes and began to relax, the aliens watched in rapt attention. Holographic displays sprang to life, showing her brain activity heart rate, and other vital signs. This is the first stage, Ella murmured, her voice already drowsy. Light sleep, easy to wake from. The aliens observed as Ella's brainwaves began to slow. Trix made notes furiously, her skin pulsing with excitement. Now, stage two, Ella continued, her words becoming more slurred. Body temperature drops, sleep spindles occur, Cora zoomed in on the brain activity display. These sleep spindles, they appear to be bursts of oscillatory brain activity. What purpose do they serve? But Ella was already drifting deeper, unable to respond. The room fell silent as she entered slow wave sleep, her brain waves now showing the characteristic large, slow oscillations. Remarkable, Zero whispered. Her consciousness appears to be completely suppressed yet her body continues to function. Suddenly, Ella's eyes began to move rapidly beneath her closed lids. Her fingers twitched, and her brainwaves became erratic. REM sleep, Trix announced, her voice filled with awe. She's dreaming. The aliens watched, fascinated, as Ella's brain lit up with activity. It was almost as if she were awake, yet her body remained motionless apart from the eye movements. After a few minutes, Ella's eyes fluttered open. She sat up, blinking as she readjusted to her surroundings. That was intense, she said, rubbing her eyes. Did you get the data you needed? Zira approached her, eyes gleaming with curiosity. Dr. Ross, your demonstration was most light, but it raises so many questions. How do you transition between these stages? What triggers the onset of REM sleep? Ella smiled, despite her lingering grogginess. Those are excellent questions, Commander Kell. Some we're still trying to answer ourselves. 
As the aliens bombarded Ella with more questions, she couldn't help but feel a sense of irony. Here she was, a sleep researcher, explaining the fundamentals of her field to beings from across the galaxy. There's something else you should know, Ella said, her tone becoming serious. Sleep isn't just a passive state. It's crucial for our health and cognitive function. Cora's cybernetic eyes narrowed. Explain. Sleep deprivation can have severe consequences, Ella continued. Cognitive impairment, weakened immune system, even hallucinations. In extreme cases, it can be fatal. This revelation sent a ripple of concern through the alien scientists. Zira turned to her team, her scales shifting to a deep, thoughtful blue. If sleep is so vital, she mused, then understanding it could be the key to understanding human consciousness itself. Ella nodded, a mix of excitement and apprehension coursing through her. Exactly, and if we can unlock those secrets. We could revolutionize not just human biology, Zira finished, but potentially all sentient life in the galaxy. As the implications of this sank in, alarms suddenly blared throughout the ship. Cora rushed to a console, her movements urgent. Commander, she reported, her voice tense, we're detecting multiple ships entering Earth's atmosphere. It's Vex Lorne, and he's not alone. Zira's expression hardened. It seems our rival has decided to escalate matters, prepare for defensive measures. Ella looked from one alien to another, the gravity of the situation hitting her. What had started as a fascinating scientific study was quickly turning into something far more dangerous. What does this mean? she asked her voice barely above a whisper. Zira turned to her, her alien features set in grim determination. It means, Dr. Ross, that your expertise on human sleep may now be the only thing standing between Earth and a potential invasion. As the ship hummed to life around them, preparing for conflict, Ella realized that her lifelong study of sleep had led her to a moment she could never have imagined one where the fate of humanity might rest on the very thing that had fascinated her for so long. Sam Carter sat in the dimly lit waiting room of Dr. Nora Bell's office, his leg bouncing nervously. The soothing sounds of a white noise machine did little to calm his frayed nerves. When the door opened, he nearly jumped out of his skin. Sam? I'm Dr. Nora Bell. Please, come in said a woman with kind eyes and a reassuring smile. As Sam settled into the plush armchair across from Nora, he took a deep breath. I'm not sure where to begin, he admitted. Nora leaned forward slightly. Why don't you start with what brought you here today? Sam hesitated, then decided to dive in. I, I think I was abducted by aliens, and they're obsessed with how humans sleep. To Sam's surprise, Nora didn't immediately dismiss his claim. Instead, she cocked her head, her expression a mix of curiosity and professional interest. That's certainly an unusual experience, she said carefully. Can you tell me more about what happened? Encouraged by her open response, Sam recounted his encounter with Trix and Cora, the abduction of Ella Ross, and the alien's fascination with human sleep patterns. As he spoke, he noticed Nora taking detailed notes, her brow furrowed in concentration. And now, Sam concluded, I can't sleep. Every time I close my eyes, I see their faces. I'm afraid I'm losing my mind. Nora set down her notepad. Sam, I want you to know that I'm taking what you're saying seriously. As a sleep specialist, I've heard many unusual stories related to sleep experiences. While alien abduction isn't a common one, the sleep disturbances you're describing are very real. Sam felt a wave of relief wash over him. So you don't think I'm crazy? No, I don't, Nora assured him. But I am concerned about your sleep deprivation. Lack of sleep can exacerbate feelings of anxiety and even lead to hallucinations. I'd like to run some tests, if you're comfortable with that. Sam nodded eagerly. Anything that might help. As Nora led Sam to an adjoining room equipped with sleep monitoring devices, she felt a twinge of guilt. What she was about to do went against every ethical principle she held as a therapist. But the potential implications of Sam's story were too significant to ignore. 
Make yourself comfortable, Nora instructed, attaching electrodes to Sam's head and chest. I'm going to monitor your brain activity and vital signs. Try to relax and, if possible, fall asleep. As Sam closed his eyes, Nora quietly activated a hidden panel in the wall. A sophisticated communication device emerged, unlike anything available on Earth. She input a series of complex codes and waited. Moments later, Zira Kell's holographic image appeared. Dr. Bell, the alien commander acknowledged. Your unscheduled communication suggests an urgent matter. Nora glanced at Sam's sleeping form before responding in a hushed tone. Commander, I have a human subject here with direct knowledge of your research team. He claims to have encountered Trixner and Cora Zax. Zira's expression remained impassive, but her scales shifted to a deeper hue. This is unexpected. What is the human's current status? He's experiencing severe sleep disturbances, Nora reported. I've initiated a sleep study to gather more data. But Commander, he's aware of your interest in human sleep patterns. This could compromise the entire operation. Zira's multifaceted eyes narrowed. Your position as our covert human expert on sleep disorders has been invaluable, Dr. Bell. But this development requires immediate action. Prepare the subject for extraction. We'll need to study him directly. Nora felt a pang of doubt. Commander, with all due respect, abducting him could cause irreparable psychological damage, not to mention the ethical implications. Your ethical concerns are noted, Zira interrupted, her tone brooking no argument. But the potential threat to our mission outweighs them. Proceed with the extraction. Kell out. As the hologram faded, Nora turned back to Sam, conflict evident on her face. For years, she had worked secretly with the aliens, fascinated by their advanced understanding of consciousness and the potential benefits for human sleep science. But now, faced with the reality of betraying a patient's trust, she hesitated. Sam stirred restlessly on the bed, his brain activity spiking on the monitors. He was clearly in the throes of a vivid dream or perhaps reliving his alien encounter. Nora made a decision. She couldn't in good conscience hand Sam over to the aliens, but she also couldn't ignore the potential threat his knowledge posed to the research that could revolutionize human understanding of sleep and consciousness. With swift, decisive movements, Nora began disconnecting the sleep monitoring equipment. She had to get Sam out of here before Zira's extraction team arrived. But where could they go? Who would believe them? As she gently shook Sam awake, Nora realized that her life, too, had irrevocably changed. She was no longer just a sleep therapist with a secret alien connection. She was now a protector of human autonomy against an interstellar threat of threat she had unwittingly helped to create. Sam, she said urgently as his eyes fluttered open. We need to leave. Now, I'll explain everything, but you need to trust me. Sam blinked groggily, confusion evident on his face. Dr. Bell, what's going on? The aliens, Nora said, her voice tight with tension. They're real, and they're coming for you. Zira Kell stood at the helm of the cloaked alien ship, her iridescent scales shimmering with anticipation. The holographic display before her showed a detailed map of New York City, with one area glowing brightly, a high-rise apartment complex in Manhattan. This location is ideal for our experiment, Zira explained to her team. High population density, diverse demographic, and minimal security measures. Trixner fidgeted nervously. Commander, are we certain this large-scale experiment is necessary? The potential for discovery is outweighed by the potential benefits, Zira cut in firmly. We need a larger sample size to truly understand the intricacies of human sleep patterns. Cora Zax, ever the pragmatist, spoke up. What about the ethical concerns? We'd be interfering with these humans without their consent. Zira's scales darkened slightly. Ethics are a luxury we can't afford right now. Vex Lorne is closing in, and if he weaponizes human sleep before we understand it, the consequences could be catastrophic. The alien team fell silent, 
each wrestling with their own doubts. They had come to study, not to interfere. But the stakes had changed. Prepare the sleep induction field, Zira commanded. We'll target the entire building simultaneously. As the aliens made their final preparations, tension crackled through the air like static electricity. Meanwhile, in the apartment complex below, life continued as usual. In one unit, Jake Moss struggled to quiet his crying infant daughter. Next door, Ivy Chen pored over textbooks, fighting to stay awake for her upcoming exam. And on the top floor, Leo Patel tossed and turned, his chronic insomnia keeping him from much-needed rest. None of them knew that their normal night was about to become anything but back on the ship. Eller Ross paced anxiously. Despite her fascination with the aliens' advanced technology, she couldn't shake her unease about the impending experiment. There has to be another way, she pleaded with Zira. We can't just force an entire building into sleep. The psychological impact alone. Dr. Ross, Zira interrupted, her tone softening slightly. I understand your concerns, but you've seen our data. The variations in human sleep patterns are too complex to study on a small scale. We need this. Ella fell silent, torn between her scientific curiosity and her ethical obligations as a doctor. As the clock struck midnight, Zira gave the command, Activate the sleep induction field. A soft, pulsing wave of energy enveloped the building, invisible to the human eye but potent in its effect. One by one, the residents of the apartment complex felt an overwhelming drowsiness wash over them. Jake Moss slumped in the rocking chair, his daughter finally quiet in his arms. Ivy Chen's head dropped onto her textbook, her pencil rolling off the desk. Even Leo Patel, who had been fighting sleep for days, found his eyelids growing heavy. Within minutes, every human in the building was in a deep, artificial slumber. Field stabilized, Cora reported. All subjects are unconscious. Zira nodded, her scales rippling with a mix of excitement and apprehension. Begin data collection. I want detailed scans of every brain wave, every REM cycle, every sleep spindle. As the alien technology went to work, mapping the sleep patterns of hundreds of humans simultaneously, Ella watched the proceedings with a growing sense of dread. The scientist in her marveled at the unprecedented data they were gathering. But the human in her couldn't help but feel they had crossed a line. How long will you keep them under? she asked Zira. As long as necessary, the alien commander replied. We need to observe full sleep cycles, including any anomalies. Suddenly, an alarm blared through the ship. Cora rushed to a console her cybernetic implants whirring as she processed the information. Commander, she called out urgently, we're detecting multiple energy signatures approaching rapidly. It's Vex Lorne's fleet. Zira's scales flashed with alarm. How did he find us? Unknown, Cora replied, but they're on an intercept course. Eat a three minutes. The alien team erupted into frantic activity, preparing for a potential confrontation but Zira remained focused on the experiment below. Maintain the sleep field, she ordered. We cannot lose this data. Ella looked at her in disbelief. You can't be serious. Those people are defenseless. If a fight breaks out, they're safer asleep than awake if it comes to that, Zira snapped. As the minutes ticked by, tension mounted on the ship. They were on the verge of a breakthrough in understanding human sleep. But at what cost? And with Vex Lorne closing in, the peaceful scientific mission was about to become a battleground. In the apartments below, the residents slept on, blissfully unaware of the cosmic drama unfolding above them. Their dreams, usually private and personal, had become the focal point of an interstellar conflict. As Vex Lorne's ships appeared on the horizon, Zera made a decision that would change the course of the mission and potentially the fate of humanity. Prepare for emergency protocols, she commanded. If we can't protect this data, we'll have to take it with us, along with our subjects. The implications of her words hung heavy in the air. What had started as an experiment was now verging on a mass abduction. As the alien ship hummed with nervous energy, 
The sleeping humans below remained oblivious to the fact that they might soon be leaving Earth behind all in the name of understanding the very thing that now held them captive, sleep itself. As the sleep induction field enveloped the apartment complex, the aliens' monitors lit up with a flurry of data. Brain waves, REM patterns, and sleep spindles from hundreds of subjects flooded their screens. But amidst the sea of normal sleep readings, something anomalous began to emerge. Commander Kell, Trix called out, her antennae twitching with excitement. I'm detecting an unusual synchronization pattern in a subset of subjects. Zira rushed to Trix's station, her scales shifting to a deep blue of intense concentration. Explain. Five subjects. No, seven. Their brainwaves are aligning in a way I've never seen before, Trix reported, her fingers flying over the holographic controls. Ella leaned in, her scientific curiosity overriding her earlier ethical concerns. It's as if their minds are connecting somehow. In apartment 7B, Leo Patel found himself in a vivid dreamscape. As a practiced lucid dreamer, he was accustomed to controlling his dreams, but this felt different. The dream world around him seemed more solid, more real than any he'd experienced before. Hello, he called out his voice echoing strangely in the dreamscape. To his shock, he received a response. Leo, is that you? It was Ivy Chen from next door, looking as confused as he felt. Before Leo could respond, other figures began to materialize in the shared dream space. Jake Moss, still cradling his infant daughter, an elderly couple Leo recognized from the first floor, and two others he didn't know. What's happening? Jake asked his voice tinged with panic. This can't be real. Leo's mind raced. I think, I think we're in a shared dream. But how? Back on the alien ship, the team watched in fascination as the connected dreamer's brain activity spiked and swirled in complex patterns. This is unprecedented, Zira breathed, her scales pulsing with excitement. They've formed a collective consciousness within the dream state. Cora's cybernetic eyes whirred as she processed the data. But how is this possible? Our sleep induction field wasn't designed for this. Ella's face paled as a realization struck her. It's Leo Patel. He's a lucid dreamer, someone who can control their dreams. He must have unconsciously reached out and connected with the others. In the dreamscape, Leo was coming to a similar conclusion. Listen, everyone. He addressed the small group of bewildered dreamers. I think we're all actually asleep in our apartments, but somehow we've connected in this shared dream. That's impossible, one of the strangers, a woman in her thirties, protested. Is it any more impossible than all of us having the same dream? Leo countered. I'm a lucid dreamer. I can usually control my dreams. Let me try something. Concentrating hard, Leo imagined the dreamscape shifting. To everyone's amazement, the featureless void around them transformed into a lush garden. Oh my god, Ivy whispered. You did that? Leo nodded, a mix of excitement and trepidation washing over him. But I've never been able to affect other people's dreams before. Something strange is happening. On the alien ship, alarms suddenly blared. Commander, Cora called out urgently. The connected dreamer's vital signs are becoming erratic, heart rates elevated, stress hormones spiking. Zira's scales darkened with concern. Can we sever the connection? Trix shook her head. Any attempt to disrupt the field could cause severe neurological damage. Ella stepped forward, her voice tight with worry. We need to wake them up naturally. If they stay in this heightened dream state for too long, the stress on their bodies could be fatal. In the dreamscape, the shared environment began to flicker and warp, reflecting the dreamer's growing distress. Something's wrong, Leo said, struggling to maintain control. We need to wake up. How? Jake asked, clutching his daughter tighter. I've tried pinching myself, but nothing happens. Leo's mind raced. In normal dreams, death or falling usually triggers awakening. But in this shared space, I don't know what might happen if we die here. The dreamscape trembled, dark cracks appearing in the once idyllic garden. 
The dreamers huddled together, fear etched on their faces. We're trapped, Ivy realized, her voice quavering. Aren't we? On the ship, Zira made a difficult decision. Prepare for emergency extraction. We need to bring these subjects aboard immediately. But the others, Ella began to protest. We'll be fine once we deactivate the field, Zira cut her off. These seven are our priority now. Their lives depend on it. As the alien ship descended towards the apartment complex, the seven connected dreamers remained locked in their shared mindscape, unaware that their physical bodies were about to leave Earth behind. In the dreamscape, Leo felt a strange pulling sensation. Something's happening, he warned the others. Everyone, stay close. Whatever comes next, we face it together. The shared dream world began to dissolve around them, replaced by a blinding light. As consciousness slowly returned, the seven dreamers would find themselves not in their familiar apartments, but in the sterile, alien environment of Zira's ship their minds still linked, their understanding of reality forever altered, and their very lives hanging in the balance of an experiment gone far beyond its original scope. Sam Carter and Ella Ross stood side by side in the alien ship's laboratory, their eyes fixed on the seven unconscious humans floating in stasis pods. The eerie blue glow of the pods cast long shadows across their worried faces. I still can't believe this is real, Sam muttered, shaking his head. A week ago, my biggest worry was making my rent payment. Ella placed a reassuring hand on his shoulder. I know it's overwhelming, Sam, but right now, these people need our help. We're uniquely positioned to do something about it. Sam nodded, taking a deep breath. You're right. So, what's our first move, Dr. Ross? Ella's brow furrowed in concentration. We need to find a way to safely disconnect their shared dreamscape without causing neurological damage. But human neuroscience isn't equipped to handle this kind of phenomenon. And alien technology isn't designed to work with human brains, a gruff voice interjected. Sam and Ella turned to see a new alien enter the lab. Unlike the others they'd encountered, this one had a more mechanical appearance, with various technological attachments seamlessly integrated into its body. I'm Jax Quill, the alien introduced itself. Zira tells me you need my expertise. Ella stepped forward, her scientific curiosity piqued. You're a technology expert? Jax's optical sensors whirred as they focused on Ella. I'm the foremost expert on consciousness altering tech in three galaxies, but I've never worked with human neural patterns before. This is uncharted territory. Sam, feeling out of his depth, but determined to help, spoke up. I've experienced their tech firsthand. Maybe I can help bridge the gap between what you know and how it affects humans. Jax considered this for a moment, then nodded. Your input could be valuable. What do you propose? Ella, already formulating a plan, moved to a nearby console. We need to create a neural interface that can safely interact with human brainwaves something that can enter the shared dreamscape and guide the dreamers back to individual consciousness. Ambitious, Jax commented, a hint of admiration in their synthetic voice. But the risk of permanent neural damage is high. Sam's face paled. What kind of damage are we talking about? Worst case? Complete synaptic breakdown. Essentially, brain death, Jax replied bluntly. The gravity of the situation hung heavy in the air. Ella, however, wasn't deterred. We have to try. Every moment they spend in that shared dream state puts more stress on their physical bodies. Jax's internal mechanisms word as they process the challenge. I might be able to modify one of our consciousness probes to interface with human neural patterns, but we'd need a way to calibrate it correctly. Sam's eyes lit up with an idea. What if I volunteered? You could use my brain as a template to fine-tune the interface. Ella turned to him, concern etched on her face. Sam, that's incredibly risky. We don't know what kind of effect it could have on you. It's a risk I'm willing to take, Sam insisted. These people need our help, and I'm the only human here who's not trapped in a dream. Jax nodded approvingly. Brave of you, human. 
with your neural patterns as a guide, we might just have a chance. As Jax began preparing the modified consciousness probe, Ella and Sam worked together to map out the intricacies of human sleep cycles and dream states. Ella's extensive knowledge of sleep science proved invaluable, while Sam's recent experiences with alien technology helped them anticipate potential complications. Hours passed in a flurry of activity. Holographic brain scans floated around them, alien algorithms merged with human neurological data, and the air buzzed with the energy of scientific breakthrough. Finally, Jax stepped back from the central console, their optical sensors glowing with cautious optimism. I believe we're ready for a test run. Sam took a deep breath, steeling himself. Okay, let's do this. As Sam lay down on a bio bed, Ella attached a series of electrodes to his head. Her hands trembled slightly, betraying her nervousness. Are you sure about this, Sam? He managed a small smile. No, but I'm sure we have to try. Jax approached with a modified consciousness probe a sleek, silvery device that hummed with alien energy. This will create a bridge between your consciousness and the shared dreamscape. Your job is to make contact with the dreamers and guide them towards individual awareness. Sam nodded, his mouth dry. And if something goes wrong? We'll pull you out immediately, Ella assured him though her voice wavered slightly. The lab shook violently, sending equipment crashing to the floor. Sam sat up, panic rising in his chest. What do we do now? Ella and Jax exchanged a grim look. We proceed, Jax decided. We might not get another chance. Before Sam could protest, Jax activated the consciousness probe. Sam's world exploded into a kaleidoscope of sensation, his mind hurtling towards the shared dreamscape. As Sam's consciousness merged with the dream world, Ella watched his vital signs anxiously. Outside, the sounds of battle grew closer. They were out of time and the fate of seven dreamers, not to mention the future of human-alien relations, now rested on Sam's ability to navigate a realm beyond anything he'd ever experienced. In the dreamscape, Sam opened his eyes to a world both familiar and alien, knowing that the next few moments could determine not just his fate, but the fate of two species on the brink of a discovery that could change the universe forever. Leo Patel stood at the center of the swirling dreamscape, his mind racing as he tried to make sense of the chaos around him. The once stable shared dream had devolved into a maelstrom of shifting realities, each dreamer's subconscious fears and desires battling for dominance. Everyone, stay close, Leo shouted over the din of collapsing dream structures and warping landscapes. The other six dreamers huddled near him, their faces etched with fear and confusion. Ivy Chen pointed at the sky which was cracking like a massive sheet of glass. Leo, what's happening? Leo closed his eyes, concentrating hard. He'd always been able to control his own dreams, but this was different. He could feel the collective consciousness of the group, a tangled web of thoughts and emotions. I think, I think I can stabilize it, Leo said, his voice strained with effort. He extended his hands, and suddenly, the chaotic dreamscape began to slow its frantic shifting. The cracking sky mended itself, the ground solidified, and a peaceful meadow materialized around them. The other dreamers gasped in awe. How did you do that? Jake Moss asked, still clutching his infant daughter protectively. Leo opened his eyes, a mix of excitement and trepidation on his face. I'm not entirely sure. It's like I can feel all of our minds connected, and somehow, I can shape that connection. As the group marveled at their new surroundings, Leo noticed one of the dreamers standing apart from the others. Chloe Gray, a woman he vaguely recognized from his apartment building, was staring intently at a cluster of flowers that seemed to be growing and changing colors at an impossible rate. Intrigued, Leo approached her. Chloe, right? Are you doing that with the flowers? Chloe startled, and the flowers immediately reverted to normal. I... I don't know. 
I've always had these strange feelings, like I could sense things others couldn't. But this, this is different. Leo's eyes widened with realization. You're psychic, and in this dream state, your abilities are amplified. Before Chloe could respond, the ground beneath them trembled ominously. Dark, tendril-like cracks began spreading across the meadow. It's destabilizing again, Ivy cried out in panic. Leo raised his hands, ready to try and control the dreamscape once more, but Chloe grabbed his arm. Wait, she said, her eyes glowing with an otherworldly light. I can sense something, someone new entering the dream. As if on cue, a figure began to materialize in the center of the meadow. The dreamers watched in a mix of hope and apprehension as Sam Carter took shape before them. Who are you? Leo demanded, instinctively placing himself between Sam and the others. Sam held up his hands in a placating gesture. My name is Sam Carter. I'm here to help you wake up. Wake up, Jake scoffed. We've been trying to wake up for what feels like days. Sam nodded sympathetically. I know, and I'm sorry. You're all part of an alien experiment that went wrong. Your minds are trapped in a shared dream state and it's putting enormous stress on your physical bodies. The dreamers exchanged shocked glances, but Leo noticed Chloe nodding slowly. He's telling the truth, she said. I can sense it. Leo turned back to Sam. Okay, let's say we believe you. How do we wake up? We've developed a way to safely disconnect you from the shared dream, Sam explained. But I need you all to focus on your individual consciousness. You need to want to wake up. As Sam spoke, the dreamscape began to tremble again. Dark clouds gathered overhead, and the air crackled with ominous energy. It's fighting back, Chloe gasped, her eyes wide. The dream doesn't want to let us go. Leo felt the strain of holding the dreamscape together intensify. Whatever we're going to do, we need to do it fast. I don't know how much longer I can keep this stable. Sam nodded urgently. Everyone, close your eyes. Focus on your own thoughts, your own identity. Remember who you are outside of this dream. As the dreamers complied, Leo felt the collective consciousness begin to fragment. It was working, but the dreamscape's resistance was growing stronger. Massive tentacles of darkness erupted from the ground, whipping through the air towards the dreamers. Leo reacted instinctively, shaping the dream matter into a protective dome around the group. Chloe, he called out, I need your help. Understanding flowed between them without words. Chloe placed her hands on the dome, her psychic energy reinforcing Leo's construct. Keep focusing, Sam urged the others. You're almost there. One by one, the dreamers began to fade, their individual consciousness breaking free from the shared dream. Jake and his daughter vanished first, followed by Ivy and the elderly couple. As the last dreamer disappeared, leaving only Leo, Chloe, and Sam, the dreamscape howled in fury. The protective dome cracked under the onslaught of chaotic dream energy. You two need to let go now, Sam said urgently. It's time to wake up. Chloe nodded, closing her eyes. In a flash of light, she was gone. Leo turned to Sam, a question forming on his lips, but Sam shook his head. No time. Wake up, Leo. Wake up now. With a final, monumental effort, Leo released his hold on the dreamscape. The world around him shattered like glass, and he felt himself falling, falling. Leo's eyes snapped open, his heart pounding. He found himself in a strange, sterile room, surrounded by concerned alien faces and unfamiliar technology. As his mind struggled to process the transition, one thought crystallized with perfect clarity. Nothing would ever be the same again. The lab erupted into chaos as the dreamers began to awaken, their bodies jerking in the stasis pods. Ella and Jax rushed from pod to pod, monitoring vital signs and stabilizing neural patterns. Sam gasped as his consciousness snapped back to his physical body. They're awake, he managed to croak, his throat dry. It worked. Before anyone could celebrate, the lab doors hissed open. Zira Kell strode in, her scales a turbulent mix of colors reflecting her agitation. 
Behind her, restrained by two of Zira's security drones, was a familiar figure, Vexlorn. Commander, Jax began, but Zira cut them off with a sharp gesture. We have a situation, she announced, her voice tense. Vex has brought troubling news. All eyes turned to the captive alien scientist. Despite his restraints, Vex managed to look smug. Your little experiment has attracted some very unwelcome attention, he said, his multifaceted eyes gleaming. The Galactic Council has learned of your activities on Earth. They're sending an inspection team as we speak. The room fell silent as the implications sank in. Ella was the first to break the silence. What does this mean for us? For Earth. Zira's scales darkened to a deep, troubled blue. The Council oversees all interspecies research. If they find our methods unethical, the consequences could be severe for all of us. Sam looked from the awakening dreamers to the aliens, his mind racing. How much time do we have? The inspection team will arrive within 48 Earth hours, Vex supplied, seeming to relish the tension in the room. Jax's mechanical parts word as they processed the information. That's not enough time to fully stabilize the dreamers and erase all evidence of our presence. Then we need to make a decision, Zira said, her voice heavy with the weight of command. Do we attempt to conceal our activities, or do we face the Council's judgment? The lab erupted into heated debate. Ella argued passionately for transparency, citing the potential benefits of open collaboration between humans and aliens. Jax cautioned against revealing too much, fearing the Council might deem humanity too primitive for contact. As the argument raged, Sam noticed Leo Patel sitting up in his pod, looking disoriented but alert. He moved to Leo's side. How are you feeling? Sam asked quietly. Leo blinked, focusing on Sam. Like I've lived a thousand lifetimes in a single night. What happens now? Sam sighed. That's what we're trying to figure out. Zira's voice cut through the din. Enough. We don't have time for debate. As the leader of this mission, the decision falls to me. All eyes turned to the alien commander. Her scales shifted through a kaleidoscope of colors before settling on a resolute silver. We will not hide, Zira declared. We will present our findings to the Council, including the unexpected developments with the Dreamers but we must be prepared for any outcome. She turned to the newly awakened humans. You seven are now key witnesses in a matter of galactic importance. We'll need your cooperation to demonstrate the unique aspects of human consciousness we've discovered. The dreamers exchanged nervous glances. Chloe Gray spoke up, her voice shaky but determined. We'll help. After what we've experienced, how could we not? Zira nodded gratefully, then addressed her team. Prepare a comprehensive report on our findings. Jax, I need you to compile all the data on the shared dreamscape phenomenon. Ella, work with the dreamers to document their experiences. As the lab burst into activity, Sam pulled Zira aside. What about the rest of humanity? Don't they deserve to know what's happening? Zira's expression softened slightly. One step at a time, Sam. If the Council approves, full disclosure may be possible. If not, she left the sentence unfinished, the implication hanging heavily in the air. Vex, still restrained, chuckled darkly. You're all fools. The Council will never allow this level of interference with a developing species. You've doomed yourselves and possibly this entire planet. Zira signaled for the drones to remove Vex from the lab. As he was led away, she turned to address the entire group. We have 48 hours to prepare our case for the Council, she announced. Every piece of data, every personal account, could make the difference between Earth becoming part of the galactic community or being isolated for centuries to come. The gravity of the situation settled over humans and aliens alike. They had embarked on this journey seeking to understand the mysteries of sleep and consciousness. Now, they found themselves on the brink of reshaping the future of human-alien relations. As the countdown to the Council's arrival began, Sam looked around the lab at this unlikely alliance of humans and aliens. 
Despite the looming threat, he felt a glimmer of hope. They had already achieved the impossible by bridging the gap between their species. Perhaps, just perhaps, they could do it again on a galactic scale. With renewed determination, the team set to work, racing against time to prepare for a meeting that would determine the fate of two worlds and possibly reshape the understanding of consciousness throughout the universe. As the alien ship hummed with frantic activity, preparing for the Galactic Council's inspection, Leo Patel and Chloe Gray found themselves drawn back into the dreamscape. This time, however, it was different. The chaotic maelstrom had settled into a shimmering, ethereal landscape that seemed to pulse with consciousness itself. Leo, do you see that? Chloe whispered, pointing to what appeared to be translucent threads of light connecting their dream forms to something beyond the dreamscape. Leo nodded, his eyes wide with wonder. It's like, like we can see the fabric of reality itself. As they focused on these connections, their perceptions suddenly expanded. The dreamscape faded into the background, and they found themselves looking down on the alien lab from an impossible vantage point. Oh my God, Chloe gasped. We can see them. The aliens, Sam, Ella, everyone. Leo watched in fascination as the aliens moved about the lab, their forms shimmering with complex energy patterns invisible to normal human perception. It's incredible. It's like we're seeing their true forms, beyond just their physical bodies. As they observed, they noticed something else. The other dreamers, still unconscious in their pods, were beginning to exhibit strange phenomena. Ivy Chen's body was surrounded by a soft green glow, and small plants were sprouting from the metal floor around her pod. Jake Moss and his infant daughter seemed to be sharing a single, pulsating aura that expanded and contracted in perfect synchronization. Their abilities, Leo realized. They're manifesting in the real world. Back in the lab, alarms began blaring. Jacks rushed to the monitoring station, their mechanical parts whirring in agitation. Commander Kell, the dreamer's neural patterns are destabilizing again, and I'm detecting anomalous energy signatures emanating from their bodies. Zira hurried over, her scales shifting to a concerned purple. Explain. It's as if their dream abilities are bleeding into physical reality, Jax reported. Subject Chen is altering the molecular structure of the ship around her. The Moss subjects appear to be generating a localized temporal field. Ella, who had been working with Sam to prepare their report for the Council, looked up in alarm. That's impossible. Human brains aren't capable of affecting matter like that. Apparently, they are now, Zira said grimly. This complicates things significantly. If we can't control these manifestations, the Council will certainly deem humanity too dangerous for contact. In the dreamscape, Leo and Chloe exchanged worried glances. We have to do something, Chloe said. If we don't get this under control, Earth could be in serious danger. Leo nodded, his face set with determination. We need to wake the others and help them control their abilities. But how do we reach them? Chloe closed her eyes, concentrating. I can sense them. Their minds are scattered across different dream realities. We'll have to enter each one and guide them back. Like a psychic search and rescue, Leo mused. All right, let's do it. As Leo and Chloe prepared to dive deeper into the dreamscape, the situation in the lab continued to deteriorate. The elderly couple, Mr. and Mrs. Zhang, had begun to phase in and out of visibility, their bodies flickering like faulty holograms. Sam watched in horror as the lab began to warp and twist around the dreamer's pods. We need to wake them up now, he shouted over the blaring alarms. Zira shook her head. We can't risk it. Forcibly severing their connection could cause irreparable damage to their minds and possibly to the fabric of reality itself, given these new abilities. Ella, her scientific mind racing, had an idea. What if we could communicate with them in the dream state, guide them back to consciousness? Jax's optical sensors whirred as they considered the suggestion. It's possible. We could modify the consciousness probe to establish a two-way link. But it would be extremely dangerous. Whoever goes in would be at risk of becoming trapped themselves. Sam stepped forward without hesitation. 
I'll do it. I've been in there before. I can do it again. As the team rushed to prepare the modified probe, Leo and Chloe had already begun their journey through the fragmented dreamscape. They found Ivy in a lush, overgrown jungle of her own creation, Jake and his daughter in a bubble of frozen time, and the Zhangs in a shimmering realm of pure energy. With each dreamer they encountered, Leo and Chloe worked to help them understand and control their new abilities. Slowly, painstakingly, they began to guide the scattered minds back towards a central point of consciousness. Just as they were making progress, they sensed a new presence entering the dreamscape. Sam's familiar form materialized before them, looking both awed and terrified by the psychedelic mindscape around him. Leo? Chloe? Thank God I found you, Sam said, his voice echoing strangely in the dream realm. We need to get everyone out of here now. Your bodies are changing in ways we don't understand. If we don't wake you up soon, there might not be a physical reality to go back to. Leo and Chloe exchanged a knowing look. We're aware of what's happening, Sam, Leo explained. We can see everything including the aliens and their ship. Sam's eyes widened in shock. You can? But how? There's no time to explain, Chloe interjected. We're gathering the others. Once we're all together, we should be able to wake up. But Sam, you need to know something. These abilities we've developed, they're not going away when we wake up. Sam's face paled as he realized the implications. The Council. If they find out humans have these kinds of powers. Exactly, Leo nodded grimly which is why we need to wake up now and figure out how to control these abilities before they arrive. As the dreamers began to coalesce around them, the dreamscape trembled ominously. The line between dream and reality was blurring, and time was running out. The fate of human-alien relations, and possibly the very nature of reality itself hung in the balance, dependent on whether this group of accidental psychics could master their newfound powers in time to face the judgment of the Galactic Council. Sam felt the familiar rush of disorientation as his consciousness plunged into the dreamscape. The world around him shimmered and shifted, a kaleidoscope of impossible colors and geometries. He steadied himself, focusing on his mission, find the dreamers and guide them back to reality. As he navigated the ever-changing landscape, Sam encountered fragments of the dreamers' subconscious minds. Ivy's lush jungles gave way to Jake's time-frozen bubbles while the Zhang's energy realm pulsed with otherworldly power. But with each step, Sam felt a growing resistance, as if the dreamscape itself was fighting against his presence. Leo, Chloe, Sam called out, his voice echoing strangely in the fluid environment. Can you hear me? A distant voice responded, barely audible over the dreamscape's ambient hum. Sam moved towards it pushing through layers of dream matter that seemed to grow denser with each passing moment. Suddenly, the world around him shifted dramatically. Sam found himself in a dark, oppressive space that felt eerily familiar. With a jolt of recognition, he realized he was in his childhood bedroom. No, Sam whispered, his heart racing. Not this place. The room began to shrink, the walls closing in. From the shadows, distorted figures emerged manifestations of Sam's deepest fears and insecurities. You're not real, Sam said, his voice shaking. This is just a dream. But the figures advanced, their whispers growing louder. Sam heard echoes of every doubt, every failure that had ever plagued him. He felt himself being overwhelmed, losing sight of his purpose. In that moment of despair, Sam heard a clear voice cut through the chaos. Sam, focus on why you're here. It was Leo, his presence a beacon in the turbulent dreamscape. Sam clung to that lifeline, forcing himself to remember his mission. With a supreme effort of will, he pushed back against his fears. I am not defined by my doubts, Sam declared, his voice growing stronger. I'm here to help, and nothing will stop me. The oppressive room shattered like glass, and Sam found himself back in the main dreamscape. Leo and Chloe stood before him, along with the other dreamers. Well done, Chloe said, her eyes shining with approval. You faced your fears and overcame them. That's the key to navigating this realm. 
Sam nodded, still shaken but resolute. We need to get everyone out of here. Your physical bodies are changing, and we don't understand how or why. Leo's expression turned grave. It's not that simple, Sam. We've discovered something. Something big. Before Leo could elaborate, the dreamscape trembled violently. Cracks appeared in the fabric of the dream reality, and through them, Sam caught glimpses of the alien lab. What's happening? Sam asked, alarmed. The barriers between dream and reality are breaking down, Chloe explained. Our enhanced abilities in the dreamscape are bleeding into the physical world. As if to illustrate her point, Ivy raised her hand, and a burst of vibrant plant life sprouted from the dream stuff around them. Jake and his daughter flickered in and out of temporal sink, while the Zhang's forms shimmered with pure energy. This is incredible, Sam breathed, all momentarily overriding his concern. But how is this possible? Leo stepped forward, his face set in determination. That's what we need to show you. We've seen beyond the veil, Sam. The truth about human sleep. It's not what anyone thinks. With a gesture, Leo expanded their perception. Sam gasped as the dreamscape fell away, revealing a vast, intricate network of energy connecting all of humanity. It pulsed and flowed like a living thing, with each sleeping mind acting as a node in this cosmic web. This is human consciousness, Leo explained. When we sleep, we're not just resting. We're connecting to this network, this collective unconscious. Chloe picked up the thread. And here's the shocking part. This network, it's not natural. At least, not entirely. Sam's mind reeled. What do you mean? Look closer, Chloe urged. As Sam focused, he began to see patterns in the energy flow patterns that were distinctly artificial. With a jolt of recognition, he realized they resembled the alien technology he'd seen on the ship. It can't be, Sam whispered. Leo nodded grimly. Human sleep isn't just a biological function. It's the result of ancient alien technology, integrated into our very consciousness over millennia. The implications hit Sam like a physical blow. But why? Who did this? Before anyone could respond, the dreamscape shuddered violently. Alarms blared, the sound bleeding through from the physical world. We're out of time, Chloe said urgently. We need to wake up now, all of us. The others are waiting. As the dreamers gathered around Sam, preparing to make the leap back to consciousness, he couldn't shake the feeling that they were on the brink of uncovering a truth that would shake the foundations of both human and alien societies. With a final, wrenching sensation, the dreamscape dissolved. Sam opened his eyes to the chaos of the alien lab, his mind racing with questions. As he looked at the awakening dreamers, their bodies still shimmering with otherworldly energy, he knew that the real challenge was only just beginning. The truth about human sleep and its connection to alien technology was out there, waiting to be unraveled, and with the Galactic Council's arrival imminent, the clock was ticking. The fate of two worlds now hung in the balance, hinging on the mysteries of the human mind and the ancient secrets buried in the very act of dreaming. The alien ship's docking bay hummed with nervous energy as Zira Kell and her team stood at attention, awaiting the arrival of the Galactic Council's inspection team. Sam, Ella, and the newly awakened dreamers huddled together nearby, still coming to terms with their recent revelations. With a hiss of pressurized air, the sleek, obsidian shuttle of the inspection team touched down. The door slid open, revealing a towering figure that seemed to absorb light rather than reflect it. Nora Vin, the lead inspector, stepped out, her multifaceted eyes scanning the assembled group with unnerving intensity. Commander Kell, Nora's voice resonated with a metallic undertone. We've received concerning reports about your activities on this planet. Zira's scales rippled with a mix of deference and defiance. Inspector Vin, I assure you our research has been conducted within the boundaries of galactic law. Nora's gaze shifted to the humans. And yet you've made direct contact with the indigenous species, explain. Before Zira could respond, Jack's quill stepped forward, their mechanical parts whirring anxiously. It was an unforeseen circumstance, Inspector. 
the human sleep patterns exhibited anomalies that required closer study. Nora's eyes narrowed. Sleep patterns? You risked exposure of our existence for something so trivial. Sam, unable to contain himself, spoke up. It's not trivial. There's something incredible happening here, something that could change everything we thought we knew about consciousness. The inspection team bristled at the human's interruption. One of Nora's subordinates, a gelatinous being named Click Zor, burbled indignantly. The primitive speaks out of turn. This is highly irregular, Inspector Vin. Nora raised a hand to silence her team. Indeed. Commander Kell, perhaps you'd care to explain why these humans are present for an official inspection. Zira straightened, her scales settling into a determined pattern. These individuals are key to our research. Their unique experiences have provided invaluable data on the nature of human consciousness. Experiences? Nora pressed. What exactly have you been doing here, Commander? As Zira began a carefully worded explanation of their sleep studies, carefully omitting any mention of the dreamscape crisis or the human's newfound abilities, Leo and Chloe exchanged worried glances. They could sense the rising tension in the room, the conflicting energies of the various alien factions swirling around them like a storm about to break. Ella, noticing their discomfort, leaned in and whispered, Are you two okay? Chloe shook her head slightly. Something's not right. There's more going on here than just an inspection. Leo nodded in agreement. I can feel it too. It's like, like there are hidden agendas clashing all around us. As if on cue, Vex Lorne's voice cut through the tense atmosphere. Inspector Vin, I must insist that you hear my side of the story. Commander Kell's team has been engaging in reckless experimentation, endangering not only these humans, but potentially the entire planet. Nora's attention snapped to Vex. You were not part of the official research team, Dr. Lorne. What is your role in this situation? Vex's multifaceted eyes gleamed with barely concealed triumph. I am here as a concerned scientist, Inspector. I've witnessed firsthand the dangerous path Commander Kell is treading. The room erupted into a cacophony of accusations and defenses. Alien translators struggled to keep up with the various languages and dialects being shouted across the docking bay. The humans watched in growing alarm as the situation spiraled out of control. Suddenly, a piercing screech cut through the chaos. All eyes turned to Jake Moss, who was clutching his head in agony. His infant daughter, still in his arms, began to wail. Jake! Sam rushed to his side. What's wrong? Through gritted teeth, Jake managed to gasp. The noise. It's too much. I can hear. Everything. Before anyone could react, a shimmering field of energy erupted around Jake and his daughter enveloping them in a bubble of absolute silence. The aliens recoiled in shock, while Nora Vin's eyes widened in a rare display of surprise. What is the meaning of this, she demanded, her voice cutting through the stunned silence. Zira, realizing the situation had spiraled beyond her control, took a deep breath. Inspector Vin, there's something we need to show you. The full truth of what we've discovered here is more complex than we initially reported. As Zira began to explain the dreamscape phenomenon and the humans' emerging abilities, the atmosphere in the docking bay grew heavy with the weight of impending change. The lines between species, between dreaming and waking, between science and the unknown, were blurring in ways no one had anticipated. Nora Vin listened intently, her inscrutable expression giving no hint of her thoughts. But as the full scope of the situation became clear, one thing was certain. The Galactic Council's decision would have far-reaching consequences not just for Earth, but for the understanding of consciousness throughout the universe. The inspection had only just begun, and already it was clear that nothing would ever be the same again, as humans and aliens alike held their breath, waiting for Nora Vin's response. The fate of two worlds hung in the balance, teetering on the edge of a cosmic revelation. As the tension mounted in the physical world, Sam found himself pulled back into the dreamscape, this time accompanied by Leo and Chloe. 
The realm they entered was vastly different from before a swirling vortex of collective human thought and emotion, pulsing with an otherworldly energy. It's even more unstable now, Leo observed, his form shimmering with dream energy. We need to find the others quickly. Chloe closed her eyes, extending her psychic senses. I can feel them. They're scattered throughout different layers of the dreamscape. It's like they've each created their own pocket reality. Sam nodded, trying to focus amidst the chaos. Okay, so how do we reach them? Leo's eyes lit up with an idea. We can use our abilities to shape the dreamscape. If we work together, we might be able to create pathways to each dreamer. As if in response to his words, the swirling energy around them began to coalesce, forming a series of shimmering bridges stretching out in different directions. Incredible, Sam breathed. It's like the dreamscape is responding to our intentions. That's exactly what it's doing, Chloe explained. Our thoughts and emotions have real power here. We just need to learn how to control it. The trio set off across the first bridge, the dreamscape shifting and changing around them with each step. They found Ivy Chen in a lush, overgrown garden of her own creation, plants responding to her every thought. Ivy, Sam called out. We need you to come with us. It's time to wake up. Ivy turned, her eyes wide with wonder. But why would I want to leave? I can create anything here. As they worked to convince Ivy, the dreamscape trembled ominously. Cracks appeared in the fabric of Ivy's created world, revealing glimpses of other dream realities beyond. We don't have much time, Chloe warned. The barriers between individual dreams are breaking down. With gentle persuasion, they managed to guide Ivy back to the central hub of the dreamscape. One by one, they repeated the process with the other dreamers Jake and his daughter trapped in a time bubble, the Zhangs exploring a realm of pure energy, and others lost in their own subconscious creations. As they gathered the last of the dreamers, a new phenomenon caught their attention. A massive, pulsating entity began to take shape in the center of the dreamscape, a swirling mass of memories, emotions, and instincts that seemed to encompass all of human experience. What is that? Sam asked, his voice filled with awe and trepidation. Leo's eyes widened in recognition. I think, I think it's the collective subconscious of humanity. The entity seemed to notice their presence, turning its attention to the small group of dreamers. Suddenly, they were flooded with a torrent of information and sensations, the accumulated knowledge and experiences of countless generations. Chloe gasped, overwhelmed by the influx. It's showing us the true purpose of sleep. Through the shared vision, they saw the evolutionary journey of human consciousness. Sleep wasn't just a time for physical rest, but a crucial period for the mind to process information, consolidate memories, and connect to a vast network of shared human experience. The alien technology, Sam realized, it didn't create human sleep. It enhanced what was already there, connecting us in ways we never imagined. The collective subconscious pulsed in affirmation, conveying a sense of ancient purpose. Sleep was humanity's gateway to a higher level of consciousness, a tool for survival and growth that had evolved over millennia. As the vision faded, the dreamers found themselves forever changed by the experience. They now understood that their newfound abilities weren't just random occurrences, but the awakening of latent potential that had always existed within the human mind. We need to share this knowledge, Leo said urgently. The aliens, the Galactic Council, they need to understand what's really happening here. Chloe nodded in agreement. But first, we need to wake up. We can't let the physical world fall apart while we're exploring the depths of our consciousness. Sam took a deep breath, centering himself. All right, everyone. Focus on your physical bodies. Remember who you are outside of this dream. It's time to go back. As the dreamers concentrated, the dreamscape around them began to fade. The bridges of energy dissipated, and the swirling vortex of collective thought receded. Just before they fully awakened, 
the entity of the collective subconscious reached out one last time, imparting a final message, remember. With a jolt, Sam opened his eyes to the chaotic scene in the alien ship's docking bay. The inspection team was still in heated discussion with Zira and her team, oblivious to the profound journey the dreamers had just experienced. As the other dreamers began to stir, Sam exchanged knowing glances with Leo and Chloe. They had uncovered a truth that could change everything the true nature of human consciousness and its connection to the universe. Now, they faced the daunting task of conveying this revelation to both humans and aliens alike, all while navigating the complex political landscape of interstellar relations. The fate of Earth and its place in the galactic community hung in the balance, with the dreamers holding the key to a new understanding of consciousness itself. As Nora Vin turned her penetrating gaze towards the awakening humans, Sam steeled himself for the challenge ahead. The true test was only just beginning. In the ship's laboratory, Ella Ross and Jax Quill worked feverishly, surrounded by holographic displays of human brain scans and alien schematics. The chaos of the inspection team's arrival felt distant here, replaced by the intense focus of scientific discovery. Look at this pattern, Ella said, pointing to a particular brainwave frequency. It's almost identical to the resonance frequency of your consciousness probe. Jax's optical sensors word as they analyze the data. Fascinating. It's as if human brains are naturally attuned to our technology. Ella's eyes lit up with excitement. What if it's not a coincidence? What if human evolution was somehow influenced by exposure to alien tech in the distant past? As they delved deeper into this possibility, a new pattern emerged in their data. Jax manipulated the holographic display overlaying the dreamer's brainwave patterns with the ship's energy signatures. Ella, look, Jax exclaimed. The dreamscape isn't just a psychological phenomenon. It's creating actual quantum entanglement between the dreamer's minds and our ship's systems. Ella gasped as she realized the implications. That's why their abilities are manifesting in the physical world. The dreamscape is acting as a bridge between thought and reality. Jax's mechanical parts hummed with excitement. If we can find a way to stabilize this connection, we might be able to safely disconnect the dreamers without losing their newfound abilities. As they began formulating a plan to create a harmonic resonance field that could stabilize the quantum entanglement, neither of them noticed the small, blinking device hidden in the corner of the lab. Miles away, in a nondescript government building, Jake Moss sat rigidly in front of a bank of monitors. His military uniform was crisp, but dark circles under his eyes betrayed his exhaustion. For weeks, he had been covertly monitoring the alien activity, piecing together fragments of intercepted communications and anomalous energy readings. Sir, a young analyst approached him. We've just picked up a significant spike in the unknown energy signature. It's centered on that apartment complex in Manhattan. Jake's jaw tightened. He had suspected for some time that the aliens were conducting experiments on civilians, but this was the first concrete evidence. Prepare a strike team, he ordered. We move in one hour. Back on the alien ship, Sam and the other dreamers were trying to explain their revelations about the collective subconscious to an increasingly skeptical Nora Venn. You expect me to believe, Nora said, her voice dripping with disdain, that human sleep is some kind of cosmic information network? Before Sam could respond, alarms blared throughout the ship. Zira rushed to a nearby console, her scales paling to a sickly gray. We've detected multiple human aircraft approaching our position. They're armed. Nora's multifaceted eyes narrowed. You assured me your presence here was undetected, Commander Kell. It was, Zira protested. I don't understand how. She was cut off as Ella and Jax burst into the docking bay. We've made a breakthrough, Ella announced, oblivious to the tension in the room. We think we can stabilize the dreamer's connection, too. She fell silent as she noticed the alarm lights and the grim expressions around her. What's happening? Sam quickly filled them in on the approaching human forces. As he spoke, a horrible realization dawned on him. Wait, 
Jake, you're military, aren't you? Did you have something to do with this? All eyes turned to Jake Moss, who stood rigid, his face a mask of conflicting emotions. I, I've been monitoring the situation, he admitted. My team must have detected the energy spike from the dreamscape experiment. The room erupted into chaos. Nora Vin demanded immediate evacuation, while Zira argued for staying to protect their research. The dreamers looked on in horror, realizing that their newfound abilities might soon become the focus of a human-alien conflict. Amidst the arguing, Jax approached Sam, Leo, and Chloe. The stabilization field, they said urgently. If we can activate it in time, it might mask our presence from the human forces. But we haven't tested it yet, Ella protested. We don't know what effect it could have on the dreamers. Leo stepped forward, his face set with determination. We don't have a choice. If those forces attack, everything we've discovered could be lost or worse, weaponized. Sam nodded in agreement. Do it. We'll handle whatever consequences come. As Jax and Ella rushed to implement their untested solution, the ship's sensors detected the first wave of human aircraft entering visual range. The next few moments would determine not just the fate of their research, but potentially the future of human-alien relations. Jake Moss watched the unfolding scene with a mix of duty and doubt. He had sworn to protect humanity, but now he wasn't sure if his actions were doing more harm than good. As Sam looked at him with a mixture of betrayal and pleading, Jake made a decision that would alter the course of everything. Wait, he said, his voice cutting through the chaos. I need to contact my superiors. There might be a way to de-escalate this situation. As Jake reached for his communication device, the air in the docking bay began to shimmer with the activation of Jack's and Ella's stabilization field. The dreamers felt a strange resonance building within them their newfound abilities humming with potential. In that moment, balanced on the knife edge between conflict and understanding, the true test of humanity's readiness for galactic citizenship was about to begin. The dreams of sleeping humans had opened a door to the cosmos, and now, awake and aware, they would have to navigate the consequences of their cosmic awakening. As the stabilization field hummed to life, the dreamers began to stir, one by one, they opened their eyes, blinking in the harsh light of the alien ship. But it wasn't just their physical eyes that were opening their minds seemed to expand, taking in the world around them with newfound clarity and depth. Ivy Chen was the first to fully regain consciousness. As she sat up, her senses were immediately overwhelmed. The alien technology surrounding her wasn't just visible. She could perceive the energy flowing through it understanding its purpose and function on an intuitive level. Ivy, Sam approached her cautiously. How are you feeling? Ivy turned to him, her eyes wide with wonder. I, I can see everything, Sam. The ship, the aliens, you, it's all connected. It's beautiful. As the other dreamers awakened, they too exhibited signs of enhanced perception. Leo could instinctively read the emotional states of everyone in the room, alien and human alike. Chloe found she could process complex scientific concepts with ease, her mind effortlessly unraveling the mysteries of alien technology. Nora Vin watched this transformation with a mixture of fascination and alarm. What have you done to these humans, Commander Kell? Zira, equally astonished, shook her head. This wasn't our doing, Inspector. It seems the dreamscape has awakened something within them. As the group grappled with these new developments, Jake Moss received a response from his superiors. His face paled as he listened to the transmission. They're not backing down, he announced grimly. They're demanding we turn over all alien technology and research immediately. The tension in the room skyrocketed. Nora Vin's team began preparing defensive measures while Zira and her researchers scrambled to secure their data. Amidst the chaos, Ivy felt a strange calm wash over her. Wait, she said, her voice cutting through the noise. I think I can help. All eyes turned to her as she stepped forward, her movements graceful and assured. I can sense the human forces approaching, their minds. They're filled with fear and confusion, but I think I can reach them. Before anyone could stop her, 
Ivy closed her eyes and extended her consciousness outward. The others watched in awe as a soft green glow enveloped her body. Miles away, in the cockpit of the lead fighter jet, the pilot suddenly felt a wave of calm wash over him. Images flooded his mind visions of a united Earth, of humans and aliens working together to unlock the secrets of the universe. He felt a deep, instinctive understanding that the aliens meant no harm, that there was so much to be gained from cooperation. One by one, the other pilots and ground forces experienced similar visions. The tension drained from their bodies, replaced by a sense of wonder and possibility. Back on the ship, Ivy opened her eyes, swaying slightly. Leo rushed to support her. I showed them, she said softly. I showed them what we saw in the dreamscape. The potential for unity, for growth. Jake's communication device crackled to life. Stand down came the astonished voice of his superior. I repeat, all forces stand down. We're reassessing the situation. A collective sigh of relief swept through the ship. But for Ivy, the challenge was just beginning. As the immediate crisis passed, she found herself struggling to readjust to the mundane aspects of reality. In the days that followed, as negotiations between humans and aliens began in earnest, Ivy grappled with her new abilities. Simple tasks became overwhelming as she perceived layers of reality invisible to others. Walking down a busy street was a sensory overload, the thoughts and emotions of passers-by bombarding her enhanced mind. I don't know how to turn it off, she confided in Sam one evening, her voice trembling. It's like I'm connected to everything and everyone all the time. How do I live a normal life like this? Sam who had been working closely with Ella and Jax to understand the dreamer's transformation, offered a sympathetic smile. Normal might not be an option anymore, Ivy, but we're all in this together. We'll figure it out. As Ivy struggled to find balance, the other dreamers faced their own challenges. Leo's empathic abilities made social interactions intense and often overwhelming. Chloe found it difficult to communicate with others who couldn't keep up with her accelerated thought processes. Yet, with these challenges came incredible opportunities. The dreamers enhanced cognitive abilities and deep understanding of both human and alien consciousness made them invaluable in the ongoing negotiations. They served as bridges between species, able to translate complex concepts and foster mutual understanding. Ivy, despite her struggles, found herself at the forefront of a new field of study one that blended human psychology, alien technology, and the newly discovered realms of consciousness. Her ability to perceive and influence the world around her in profound ways opened up possibilities that were previously unimaginable. As Earth stood on the brink of a new era, with the promise of joining a galactic community, the dreamers represented the next step in human evolution. They were living proof of humanity's potential of the untapped abilities that lay dormant within the human mind. But with this great power came great responsibility. As Ivy looked out at the stars one night, feeling the pulse of the universe in a way she never had before, she realized that their journey was far from over. The dreamscape had awakened something profound within them, and now it was up to them to guide humanity through its cosmic awakening. The true challenge lay ahead learning to harness their newfound abilities not just for personal gain, but for the betterment of all humanity and their new alien allies. As Ivy took a deep breath, centering herself amidst the swirling cosmos of her enhanced perception, she knew that the dreams of a united, enlightened future were now closer to reality than ever before. As the negotiations between humans and aliens progressed, the truth about the dreamscape experiment became impossible to conceal. Nora Vin's multifaceted eyes narrowed as she absorbed the full scope of Zira Kell's unauthorized research. This goes beyond mere scientific curiosity. Commander Kell, Nora's voice resonated with barely contained anger. You've fundamentally altered human consciousness without Galactic Council approval. Do you understand the severity of this breach? Zira's scales rippled with a mix of defiance and apprehension. Inspector Vin, I assure you our intentions were purely scientific. We had no way of predicting the outcome. Intentions are irrelevant, Nora cut her off. 
the fact remains that your actions have triggered an evolutionary leap in a pre-contact species. This violates dozens of interstellar laws. The tension in the room was palpable. The human representatives, including Jake Moss, watched the exchange with growing concern. The dreamers, still adjusting to their enhanced abilities, could sense the conflicting emotions swirling around them. As Nora began listing the potential punishments for Zira and her team, Sam stepped forward. His time in the dreamscape had given him a unique perspective, one that bridged the gap between human and alien understanding. Inspector Vin, Sam interjected, his voice calm but firm. If I may offer a different perspective. Nora turned her penetrating gaze on Sam. You may speak, human, but choose your words carefully. Sam took a deep breath, centering himself as he had learned to do in the dreamscape. What's happened here isn't just about rules or regulations. It's about the fundamental nature of consciousness itself. The dreamscape experiment didn't just change us. It revealed something that was always there, waiting to be awakened. He gestured to the other dreamers. We've seen the collective unconscious of humanity. We've experienced a level of connection an understanding that transcends individual minds. And in doing so, we've discovered that this connection extends beyond our species. Sam's words seemed to resonate on a deeper level, capturing the attention of both humans and aliens. Even Nora Vin's rigid posture softened slightly. The alien technology didn't create this ability in us, Sam continued. It simply provided a key to unlock what was already there and I believe this discovery is too important to be buried or punished. It could be the foundation for a new era of cooperation and understanding between all sentient beings. Ella stepped forward, adding her scientific perspective. Sam's right. Our research suggests that the dreamscape phenomenon isn't limited to humans. With refinement, this technology could potentially allow for deep, meaningful communication between any species, regardless of biological differences. The room fell silent as the implications of this sank in. Nora Vin's team exchanged glances, their earlier hostility replaced by cautious curiosity. After a long moment, Nora spoke. Your arguments are compelling, but they don't change the fact that protocols were violated. The Galactic Council will demand accountability. It was then that Sam had an idea a bold, potentially game-changing proposal. What if, he began, his heart racing, what if Earth became a test case, a controlled experiment in accelerated species development and integration into the galactic community? The room erupted in a mix of excited murmurs and concerned objections. Sam pressed on, his voice growing stronger. Think about it. You have a unique opportunity here a species on the brink of a cosmic awakening, with individuals who can bridge the gap between human and alien consciousness. Instead of punishing this discovery, why not nurture it? Sam's proposal hung in the air, its potential reverberating through the minds of all present. The dreamers, sensing the weight of the moment, lent their support, each adding their unique perspective on the benefits of such an arrangement. Nora Vin remained silent for what felt like an eternity, her inscrutable alien features giving no hint of her thoughts. Finally, she spoke. What you're suggesting is unprecedented. It would require a complete reevaluation of our protocols for species integration. Exactly, Sam nodded eagerly. But isn't that the point of scientific exploration? To push boundaries and discover new possibilities. Zira Kell, seeing a chance for redemption, added her voice to Sam's. Inspector Vin, if the Council approves this proposal, my team and I would dedicate ourselves fully to ensuring its success. Our research could pave the way for a new era of intergalactic cooperation. As the discussions intensified, with both human and alien representatives debating the merits and risks of Sam's proposal, a sense of possibility filled the room. The dreamers, with their enhanced perceptions, could almost see the threads of potential futures weaving together. Nora Vin finally raised a hand, silencing the debate. I will present this proposal to the Galactic Council, she announced. But be warned the scrutiny on this project will be unprecedented. The fate of Earth's integration into the Galactic community will rest on its success. 
as the gravity of the situation settled over the room, Sam realized that his experiences in the dreamscape had led to this moment. They stood on the precipice of a new chapter in human history, one that could redefine humanity's place in the cosmos. The chapter ended with a sense of both excitement and trepidation. The dreamscape had opened doors that could never be closed, and now, for better or worse, Earth was about to become the focal point of a grand cosmic experiment. As Sam looked around at the faces of humans and aliens alike, he knew that the true challenge was only just beginning. The conference room aboard the alien ship buzzed with tension as Sam's proposal hung in the air. Human and alien representatives sat around a large, holographic table, their faces light by the soft glow of alien technology. Zirakel was the first to break the silence. This is an unprecedented opportunity, she said, her scales shimmering with excitement. A joint research initiative could unlock secrets of consciousness we've only dreamed of. Jake Moss, representing Earth's military interests, leaned forward with a frown. And what happens if this unlocked potential turns out to be dangerous? We could be opening Pandora's box. Ella Ross, her eyes bright with scientific curiosity, countered. But that's precisely why we need to study it, Jake. If this potential exists within humanity, isn't it better to understand and guide it rather than let it develop unchecked? As the debate heated up, Clix Zor, a gelatinous alien scientist known for their skepticism, undulated forward. Their translucent form rippled with barely contained disdain. This proposal is nothing short of reckless, Clix burbled, their words translated by a nearby device. Human consciousness is primitive and volatile. Attempting to enhance it could lead to catastrophic consequences for the galaxy. Sam felt a flare of indignation, but kept his voice calm. With all due respect, Click Zor, you're basing that assessment on limited data. Our experiences in the dreamscape have shown that human consciousness is far more complex and interconnected than previously thought. Clix's form darkened, a sign of agitation. Anecdotal experiences in an artificial construct are hardly scientific evidence, human. Then let's gather that evidence, Sam pressed. That's the whole point of this initiative. We can set up controlled experiments, monitored by both human and alien scientists. Nora Vin, who had been silently observing, interjected. The potential benefits are intriguing, but the risks cannot be ignored. How do you propose to contain any unforeseen consequences, Sam Carter? Sam took a deep breath, feeling the weight of all eyes on him. We start small. Controlled groups, rigorous safety protocols. We can establish a joint ethics committee to oversee every stage of the research. Leo Patel, his enhanced empathic abilities, sensing the room's conflicting emotions, spoke up. There's fear here, on both sides. But there's also hope and curiosity. We have a chance to bridge the gap between our species in a way that's never been possible before. Chloe Gray added, Our enhanced cognitive abilities aren't just party tricks. They represent a fundamental shift in human potential. If we can understand and harness this, it could revolutionize everything from medicine to interstellar communication. The debate continued, with arguments flying back and forth. Clix Zor remained adamantly opposed, warning of the dangers of accelerating a species' evolution. Jake Moss voiced concerns about military applications and the need for strict controls. As the discussion reached a fever pitch, Ivy Chen, who had been quietly absorbing the conversation, suddenly stood. The room fell silent as she began to speak, her voice soft but filled with an undeniable power. I understand the fears and doubts, she said her eyes seeming to look beyond the room. I feel them too, but I've also seen what's possible. In the dreamscape, I touched minds across the planet. I felt the collective hopes and dreams of humanity, and I sensed something more a connection to something greater, something that spans the cosmos. She turned to Clix Zor, her gaze unwavering. Our consciousness isn't primitive, Clix Zor. It's part of the same cosmic tapestry as yours. We're just beginning to understand how to read it. The room was silent for a moment, absorbing Ivy's words. Even Clix seemed taken aback by the depth of her insight. 
Finally, Nora Vin spoke. This proposal carries great risk, but also great potential. I will recommend to the Galactic Council that we proceed, but with stringent oversight and clear boundaries. She fixed Sam with a penetrating stare. You will bear much of the responsibility for this, Sam Carter. Are you prepared for the consequences if this goes wrong? Sam felt the weight of the moment, but also a surge of determination. I am, he said firmly. We have a chance to push the boundaries of what's possible, to bring our species together in understanding rather than fear. It's worth the risk. As the meeting adjourned, with plans to draft a formal proposal for the Galactic Council, Sam felt a mix of exhilaration and trepidation. They were about to embark on a journey that could redefine humanity's place in the universe. Click Zor approached Sam as the others filed out. I still have my doubts, human, the alien scientist burbled. But I admit, your species continues to surprise me. Perhaps there is more to learn here than I initially thought. Sam nodded, recognizing the olive branch for what it was. That's all we're asking for, clicks Zor, a chance to learn, together. As they left the conference room, the ship hummed with a new energy. The joint human-alien research initiative was taking its first tentative steps, carrying with it the hopes and fears of two worlds. The dreamscape had opened a door, and now, awake and aware, humanity was poised to step through it into a new era of cosmic exploration and self-discovery. As the joint human-alien research initiative began to take shape, a new complication arose from an unexpected source. Ethan Cruz, one of the original dreamers who had been relatively quiet since awakening, suddenly became the center of attention. It started with small things Ethan correctly predicting minor events around the research facility. But as days passed, his predictions became more significant and undeniable. He foresaw equipment malfunctions, unexpected visitors, even a minor earthquake that shook the facility. One morning, Ethan burst into the main laboratory his eyes wide with urgency. We need to evacuate the east wing immediately, he gasped. There's going to be a fire. Sam and Ella exchanged worried glances. Ethan, are you sure? Ella asked gently. Before Ethan could respond, alarms blared throughout the facility. Smoke began billowing from the direction of the east wing. As the incident was dealt with, Sam pulled Ethan aside. How long have you been having these visions? Ethan ran a hand through his disheveled hair. A few weeks now, they always come in my sleep. At first, I thought they were just vivid dreams, but then they started coming true. News of Ethan's prophetic abilities spread quickly, adding a new layer of complexity to the already delicate situation. Some saw it as proof of the initiative's potential, while others viewed it as a dangerous development that needed to be contained. Click Zor was particularly agitated. Precognition. This is exactly the kind of unpredictable consequence I warned about. We must suspend all research immediately. Zirakel, however, saw an opportunity. This could be groundbreaking. If we can understand the mechanism behind these visions, it could revolutionize our approach to temporal physics. As debates raged among the scientific community, Lyra Thex, an alien anthropologist who had recently joined the initiative found herself drawn to a different aspect of the unfolding drama. Lyra had always been fascinated by the cultural practices of other species, and human dreams had captured her imagination from the moment she learned of them. While others focused on the physiological and physical aspects of sleep, Lyra delved into its cultural significance. She spent hours interviewing the dreamers and other humans, learning about dream interpretation, lucid dreaming techniques, and the role of dreams in various human mythologies and religions. It's remarkable, Lyra shared her findings during a team meeting. Dreams seem to be a universal constant in human cultures, yet their interpretation and significance vary wildly. Some see them as messages from divine entities, others as windows into the subconscious mind. Her research began to bridge gaps in understanding between humans and aliens. She drew parallels between human dream practices and similar phenomena in other alien cultures, helping both sides find common ground. One afternoon, 
Lyra approached Ethan with a novel idea. Your prophetic dreams, she began, her alien features animated with excitement. They bear a striking resemblance to the trance states of the Oracle Pods on Zalara Prime. I wonder if there might be a connection. This insight led to a new avenue of research, combining Ethan's abilities with alien trance techniques. The results were promising, offering more control over the prophetic visions and a deeper understanding of their nature. As Lyra's work gained recognition, she found herself becoming an unexpected mediator between species. Her ability to contextualize human dreams within a broader galactic framework helped alleviate some of the fears surrounding the research. However, not everyone was comfortable with the direction things were taking. Jake Moss, ever vigilant about security concerns, voiced his worries during a high-level briefing. We're moving too fast, he argued. Prophetic visions, enhanced abilities, how can we be sure we're not opening ourselves up to manipulation or invasion? Sam, who had been working closely with both Ethan and Lyra, countered. That's why this initiative is so important, Jake. We're not just stumbling around in the dark anymore. We're learning, adapting, and most importantly, we're doing it together with our alien allies. Nora Vin, who had been observing the project's progress with keen interest, offered a measured response. While the concerns are valid, the potential benefits cannot be ignored. However, we must establish stricter protocols for handling unforeseen developments like Ethan's abilities. As the meeting concluded, Sam felt a mix of excitement and trepidation. Ethan's prophetic dreams and Lyra's cultural insights were pushing the boundaries of their understanding, opening up new possibilities but also new risks. That night, as the facility settled into its nocturnal rhythm, Ethan jolted awake from another vision. This one was different, more vivid, more urgent. He saw flashes of a massive alien fleet, of worlds in turmoil, and at the center of it all, Earth changed in ways he couldn't comprehend. As Ethan rushed to report his vision, he couldn't shake the feeling that they were on the brink of something much bigger than they had ever imagined. The dreams that had once been a simple biological function were now becoming a gateway to the future of not just humanity, but the entire galaxy. The joint initiative had started as an exploration of human consciousness, but it was quickly becoming clear that they were unraveling the very fabric of reality itself. As dawn broke over the facility, bringing with it the promise of new discoveries and new challenges, one thing was certain. The true impact of their work was only just beginning to be felt. The Joint Human-Alien Sleep Research Facility hummed with anticipation as the first official cross-species sleep study began. Volunteers from both Earth and various alien worlds had been carefully selected, paired, and prepped for what promised to be a groundbreaking experiment. In Sleep Pod 7, Mia Tran, a neuroscience graduate student from Earth, settled nervously into the specially designed chamber. Next to her, separated by a transparent barrier, Dax Kron, a crystalline being from the planet Xyrox, arranged his faceted body into a meditative pose. Remember, Ella Ross's voice came through the intercom. The goal is to achieve simultaneous REM sleep. The neural link will activate automatically once you both enter the correct brainwave state. Mia took a deep breath, trying to calm her racing heart. No pressure, right? Just try to fall asleep while making history. To her surprise, she heard a chiming laugh from Dax. Your species' use of humor to alleviate tension is fascinating, Mia Tran. Shall we embark on this journey of consciousness together? Mia smiled, feeling slightly more at ease. As the lights dimmed and the sleep induction field activated, she closed her eyes and let herself drift. Hours passed as researchers monitored the various pairs. Some struggled to synchronize their sleep cycles, while others showed promising neural activity. But it was Pod 7 that suddenly lit up with unprecedented readings. Look at this! Jax exclaimed, their mechanical parts whirring with excitement. The neural link between Mia and Dax is off the charts. It's like their minds are. Merging, Sam finished, staring at the holographic display in awe. Inside the shared dreamscape, Mia found herself in a realm unlike anything she had ever experienced. Colors she couldn't name swirled around her, 
and she felt her consciousness expand in ways that defied description. Dax, she called out, her voice echoing strangely. Are you here? I am here. Mia Tran came a response that wasn't so much heard as felt. And you are here, and we are, more. As their minds intertwined, Mia began to understand Dax on a level that transcended language. She experienced the crystalline beauty of Xyrox, felt the harmonious resonance that guided Dax's species. In turn, Dax marveled at the intricate emotions and memories that made up Mia's human experience. Together, they explored the depths of this shared consciousness, discovering new forms of communication and understanding. It was as if they had unlocked a universal language of thought and feeling. Back in the lab, the research team watched in amazement as the neural link between Mia and Dax strengthened. Unusual energy patterns began to emanate from their sleep pod, causing nearby equipment to react in unexpected ways. This is incredible, Lyra Thex breathed, her anthropologist mind racing with the implications. They're not just sharing a dream, they're creating an entirely new form of consciousness. As the experiment continued, other pairs began to show similar, if less intense, signs of deep connection. The barrier between species seemed to dissolve in the realm of shared dreams, leading to breakthroughs in understanding and communication. When the sleep cycle finally ended, and the participants began to wake, there was a palpable sense of change in the air. Mia's eyes fluttered open, and she found herself gazing at Dax with a sense of profound recognition. That was. She began, struggling to find words adequate to describe the experience. Beyond, Dax chimed, his crystalline form glowing with residual energy. We have touched the cosmic tapestry, Mia Tran, and it has touched us in return. As the research team debriefed the participants, it became clear that something fundamental had shifted. Those who had experienced the deepest connections reported a lasting sense of understanding and empathy for their alien partners. Mia, still processing the profound experience, shared her insights with the team. It wasn't just about communicating, she explained, her eyes alight with wonder. It was about truly experiencing another form of existence. I saw through Dax's eyes, felt the universe the way his species does, and in turn, he understood what it means to be human in a way no amount of study could achieve. Lyra Thex was particularly intrigued by this development. This goes beyond cultural exchange, she mused. It's a form of experiential anthropology we've never even dreamed of. As the data from the experiment was analyzed, new questions and possibilities arose. Could this shared dreaming be used to bridge gaps between conflicting species? Might it offer solutions to long-standing galactic disputes? And what did it mean for the future of both human and alien consciousness? Sam, watching as Mia and Dax continued to communicate in a mixture of words and subtle crystalline resonances, felt a surge of hope. This is it, he said softly. This is how we take the next step into the galactic community. Not just as allies or partners, but as beings capable of truly understanding one another. As news of the experiment's success spread, both excitement and concern rippled through human and alien societies. The boundaries of consciousness had been pushed further than ever before, opening up a new frontier of exploration and discovery. But with this breakthrough came new challenges. How would this deep level of connection affect individual identities? What safeguards would be needed to protect the minds of participants? And how would those in power react to a form of communication that couldn't be controlled or censored? As the research team prepared to present their findings to the Galactic Council, they knew that the true impact of their work was only beginning to unfold. The shared dreams of humans and aliens had opened a door to a new understanding of consciousness itself, and the universe would never be the same. The alarms blared through the research facility, shattering the quiet of the night shift. Sam Carter jolted awake in his quarters, instantly alert. The comm system crackled to life with Zira Kell's urgent voice. Security breach in Sector 7. All personnel on high alert. Sam rushed to the command center, his mind racing. Sector 7 housed the most advanced alien sleep technology, the culmination of their joint research efforts. 
As he burst through the doors, he found Eller Ross and Jack's quill already huddled around a holographic display of the facility. What's happening? Sam demanded, scanning the chaotic scene before him. Ella's face was grim. It's Jake. He's leading a group of humans in an attempt to steal the prototype dream amplifier. Sam's heart sank. Jake Moss, once their ally, had grown increasingly paranoid about alien influence. But this, this was beyond anything they had anticipated. How did they get past our security? Zira asked, her scales flickering with agitation. Jax's mechanical eyes whirred as they analyzed the data. They used insider knowledge. Someone on our team must have helped them. The implications of this betrayal hung heavy in the air. The dream amplifier was still experimental, capable of enhancing the shared dreaming experience a hundredfold. In the wrong hands, it could be weaponized, used to manipulate minds on a massive scale. We need to stop them before they reach the extraction point, Sam said, his voice steely with determination. Ella, coordinate with the alien security forces. Jax, lock down all exit points. I'm going in. Zira placed a scaled hand on Sam's arm. Not alone, you're not. This is our fight too. As they raced towards Sector 7, Sam's mind flashed back to the countless hours spent with Jake, working towards what they thought was a shared vision of the future. How had it come to this? They arrived to find the sector in chaos. Alarms blared, emergency lights flashed, and the air was thick with the acrid smell of weapons fire both human and alien. Through the smoke, Sam caught glimpses of Jake's team, moving with military precision towards the central lab. Jake, Sam shouted, his voice cutting through the din. Stop this madness. You don't know what you're dealing with. Jake's voice came back, hard and determined. We know exactly what we're dealing with, Sam. This technology is too powerful to be left in alien hands. We're taking it back for humanity's protection. Sam edged closer using the smoke as cover. He could see Jake now, flanked by his team, the stolen dream amplifier clutched in his arms. Behind him, Zira and a group of alien security personnel were moving into position. Think about what you're doing, Sam pleaded. This alliance, this research, it's bigger than just us. It's about the future of both our species. Jake's laugh was bitter. Always the idealist, Sam, can't you see? They're using us, studying us like lab rats. Well, now it's our turn to level the playing field. Suddenly, one of Jake's team spotted Zira's group. Aliens incoming, he shouted, raising his weapon. No, Sam yelled, but it was too late. The air erupted with weapons fire from both sides. In the chaos that followed, Sam saw Jake make a break for it. The dream amplifier tucked under his arm. Without thinking, Sam gave chase, dodging energy blasts and debris. He cornered Jake in a dead-end corridor. It's over, Jake. Don't make this worse than it already is. Jake's eyes were wild, desperate. You don't understand. Sam, I've seen what this technology can do. The visions, the power humanity needs this to survive in the galaxy. Not like this, Sam said, taking a cautious step forward. We're on the brink of something amazing, Jake. Real understanding between species. Don't throw it all away. For a moment, Jake hesitated, and Sam saw a flicker of doubt in his old friend's eyes. But then Jake's resolve hardened. He raised his weapon, pointing it squarely at Sam's chest. Time seemed to slow. Sam could hear his heart pounding in his ears. He thought of everything they had worked for, the bridges they had built between worlds, he couldn't let it end here. Just as Jake's finger tightened on the trigger, a burst of alien energy enveloped him. Jake cried out, more in surprise than pain, and crumpled to the ground. The dream amplifier clattered across the floor. Sam spun around to see Zira lowering her weapon, her scales shimmering with a mix of relief and sadness. I'm sorry, Sam. I couldn't let him. Sam nodded, his throat tight. I know. Thank you. As alien security personnel moved in to secure Jake and the stolen technology, Sam knelt beside his fallen friend. The betrayal stung, 
but he couldn't help feeling a deep sadness for what had been lost. Ella's voice came through on the calm. Sam, are you all right? What's the situation? Sam took a deep breath, steadying himself. We've contained the situation. The technology is secure, but we've got a lot of work to do to rebuild trust. As the adrenaline of the confrontation faded, the true cost of the night's events began to sink in. The fledgling human-alien alliance had been tested, and while it had survived, the cracks were now painfully visible. Sam looked at Zira, seeing his own mix of emotions reflected in her alien features. They had prevented a disaster, but the road ahead would be challenging. Rebuilding trust, both among their own team and with the wider human population, would take time and effort. But as Sam helped the security team secure the area, he felt a renewed sense of purpose. This setback, painful as it was, only underscored the importance of their work. Understanding between species, true communication and empathy was more crucial than ever. The shared dreams that had brought them together now seemed like a fragile lifeline in a sea of potential conflict. But it was a lifeline worth fighting for, a bridge between worlds that could, with care and dedication, grow strong enough to withstand any storm. As the facility slowly returned to normal, Sam knew that their real work was just beginning. The universe was watching, and the next steps they took would shape the future of human-alien relations for generations to come. One year after the attempted theft of the Dream Amplifier, the Joint Human-Alien Research Facility was transformed. Gone were the stark, clinical walls and the air of cautious separation. In their place stood a harmonious blend of human and alien architecture, a physical manifestation of the bridges built between species. As Sam Carter stood at the podium, looking out over the assembled crowd of humans and aliens, he couldn't help but marvel at how far they'd come. The ceremony to celebrate their successful collaboration was more than just a formal event. It was a testament to the power of shared dreams and mutual understanding. A year ago, Sam began, his voice carrying across the hushed audience. Many of us saw sleep as simply a biological necessity. Today, we understand it as a gateway to new realms of consciousness, a bridge between minds and species. He gestured to the team seated behind him Ella Ross, Zira Kell, Jax Quill, and others who had been instrumental in their research. Each face, human and alien alike, reflected a shared sense of accomplishment and wonder. Our work has shown us that consciousness is not confined to waking hours or individual minds, Sam continued. Through shared dreaming, we've experienced the universe through each other's perceptions, fostering a level of empathy and understanding once thought impossible. As Sam spoke, he caught sight of Mia Tran and Dax Kron in the audience, sitting side by side. Their ongoing connection, forged in shared dreams, had become a symbol of what was possible between species. Mia's hand rested comfortably on Dax's crystalline form, a gesture that would have seemed alien just a year ago, but now felt perfectly natural. We've learned that the boundaries of consciousness are far more fluid than we ever imagined, Sam said, his voice filled with wonder. Alien species that once communicated through complex harmonics now dream in human metaphors. Humans have experienced the multidimensional thought processes of crystalline beings. He paused, remembering his own journey. From a skeptic who could barely believe in the reality of alien life, to a man who had walked through the dreams of a dozen different species. The growth hadn't always been easy, but it had been profound. This collaboration has changed us all, Sam acknowledged. It's taught us to question our assumptions, to open our minds to new possibilities. We've faced challenges moments of misunderstanding, fear, even betrayal. But each obstacle has only strengthened our resolve and deepened our connection. In the front row, Sam saw Jake Moss, recently released from rehabilitation. Their eyes met, and Jake gave a small nod. The road to reconciliation had been long and difficult, but Jake's unique insights into the dangers of the technology had ultimately proved valuable in developing safeguards. As we move forward, Sam continued, his voice growing stronger, we stand on the brink of even greater discoveries. Our next phase of research promises to push the boundaries of consciousness even further. 
A ripple of excitement passed through the crowd. Rumors had been circulating about the new project, but details had been kept tightly under wraps. We've only scratched the surface of what's possible when minds connect across the vastness of space, Sam said, a glint of excitement in his eyes. Our next endeavor will explore the potential for a galactic dream network a way for sleeping minds to connect across light years, sharing knowledge and experiences on an unprecedented scale. The audience buzzed with anticipation. The implications of such a network were staggering instant communication across vast distances, the ability to experience alien worlds without physical travel, a true melding of galactic cultures and consciousnesses. But beyond the scientific achievements, Sam said, his voice softening, what we've truly gained is a new way of seeing ourselves and our place in the universe. We are no longer alone, no longer confined to our individual perspectives. In our shared dreams, we found a common language of the soul. As Sam concluded his speech, the assembly rose in a standing ovation. Humans and aliens alike cheered, their voices blending in a harmony that transcended species. The air hummed with possibility, with the promise of adventures yet to come. Later, as the celebration continued around him, Sam found a quiet moment to slip away. He made his way to the observation deck, gazing out at the star-filled sky. Each point of light now held new meaning potential connections, undiscovered consciousnesses waiting to be explored. Ella joined him, her eyes reflecting the starlight. Quite a journey we've been on, huh? she said softly. Sam nodded, a smile playing on his lips. And it's only the beginning. Can you imagine what we'll discover next? As they stood there, contemplating the vast expanse of space and consciousness that lay before them, Sam felt a profound sense of peace. The universe was vast and full of wonders, but in their shared dreams, they had found a way to bridge the gaps between worlds. The next phase of their research beckoned, promising new challenges and unimaginable discoveries. But whatever lay ahead, Sam knew that the connections they had forged between humans and aliens, between waking and dreaming, would light the way forward. As the celebration continued behind them, Sam and Ella turned their gaze to the stars, ready to dream new dreams and explore the endless possibilities that awaited them in the realm of shared consciousness.